is. Apurda avare dei sonar. The gates of hell are going to open up on earth. Naragatin vasalgal in the bu logatile tarakka pada pogira de. And spirits kept in prison are going to be released. Kattukul vaika patterinda aavigal katta vilka pada pogira de. Again, I begin to shiver and tremble. இப்பொழுது மறுபடியும் நான் நடுங்க ஆரம்பித்தேன் நான் லுக் அட் தி வேர்ட்ஸ் கேட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹெல் இந்த வார்த்தையை உற்று கவனிங்கள் நரகத்தின் வாசல்கள் வாட் ஆர் தே அவைகள் என்ன இஃப் யூ ரீட் மேத்யூ சாப்டர் 16 வெர்ஸ் 18 மத்தேயு 16 ஆம் அதிகாரம் 18 ஆம் வசனத்தை நீங்கள் வாசிப்பீர்கள் என்றால் இட் வாஸ் தி லார்ட் ஜீசஸ் கிரைஸ்ட் who இன்ட்ரோ듀ஸ்ட் டு us अबाउट தி கேட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹெல் நரகத்தின் <laughs> மத்தேயு பதினாறாம் அதிகாரம் பதினெட்டாம் வசனம் மேலும் நான் உனக்கு சொல்கிறேன் நீ பேதுருவாய் இருக்கிறாய் இந்த கல்லின் மேல் என் சபையை கட்டுவேன் பாதாளத்தின் வாசல்கள் அதை மேற்கொள்வதில்லை இந்த வசனத்திலே ஒரு வார்த்தையிலே என்னுடைய கண்களை பதிய வைத்தேன் அதை மிகவும் உன்னிப்பாக நான் தியானித்தேன் the lord jesus did not say gate of hell ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து வாசல் என்று சொல்லவில்லை he say gates of hell ஆனால் வாசல்கள் என்று சொல்லி இருக்கிறார் so which means there is more than one gate all around hell அப்படி என்றால் ஒரு வாசலுக்கு மேலாக अनेक வாசல்கள் நரகத்தை சுற்றிலும் இருக்கிறது if you look at heaven நீங்கள் பரலோகத்தை கவனிக்கும் பொழுது ரெவலேஷன் சாப்டர் 21 verse 12 tells us வெளிப்படுத்தும் விசேஷம் 21 ஆம் அதிகாரம் 12 ஆம் வசனம் சொல்கிறது there are 12 gates in the city of new jerusalem 12 வாசல்கள் எருசலேமில் இருக்கிறது என்று so even in the heavenly realm there are many gates பரலோகத்திலும் अनेक வாசல்கள் உண்டு so in the same manner there are many gates in hell அதே வண்ணமாக நரகத்திலும் अनेक வாசல்கள் உண்டு and the lord jesus said ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து சொன்னார் the gates of hell are going to open on earth நரகத்தின் வாசல்கள் இந்த பூமியில் திறக்கப்பட போகிறது and spirits that are kept there in prison are going to be released ஆதிற்குள்ளாக கட்டி வைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிற ஆவிகள் கட்டவிழ்க்கப்பட போகிறது so what will happen when the gates are open and the spirits are released naragathin vaasalgal therakkapattu ipidipatta aavigal katta vilkapadum bodhu enna kaaryam nadaiperum these are the things the lord jesus christ began to explain to me aandavaragi yesu christ inda kaaryathai kurithu dhan enedathile vivarithu solli konde irundar the bible tells us in second peter chapter 2 verse 4 இரண்டு பேதுரு இரண்டாம் அதிகாரம் நான்காம் வசனத்திலே வேதாகமம் நமக்கு சொல்கிறது that there are spirits of fallen angels kept in hell விழுந்த தூதர்களுடைய ஆவிகள் நரகத்தில் வைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறது என்று now let me read this scripture to you இதை நான் உங்களுக்கு வாசிக்கட்டும் for if god did not spare the angels who sin but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment rendu pedro irandam adhigaram nangam vas nangam vasanam paavam seida thoodargalai devan thappa vidamal andagara sanglinaale katti naragathile thalli nyaya theerpukku veikkapattavargalaga oppu koduthu now look at the scripture there இந்த வசனத்தை கவனியுங்கள் angels who sinned பாவம் செய்த தூதர்களை so these are the fallen angels இவர்கள் விழுந்த தூதர்கள் they were cast down to hell அவர்களை 
நரகத்திற்கு தள்ளிவிட்டார்கள் கடைசி நியாய தீர்ப்பு ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து வந்த பிறகு நடைபெற போகிற நியாய தீர்ப்புக்காக அவர்கள் வைக்கப்பட்டிருந்தார்கள் that will be released ipdi patta pollada aavigal dhan katta vilkapada pogirathu the bible also calls them tormentors or torturers vedagamum ivargale vedanai padutugiravargal endru kuda alaikirathu matthew chapter 18 verse 34 says like that matthew 18 am adhigaram 34 am vasanam ivannamaga solgirathu and the bible also tells us vedagamum innoru kaariyathiyum namakku solgirathu in revelation chapter 20 verses 1 2 3 and verse 7 வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் இருபதாம் அதிகாரம் ஒன்றாம் வசனம் மூன்றாம் வசனம் ஏழாம் வசனத்தில் கட்டுகளிலிருந்து ஆயிரம் வருடங்களுக்கு பிறகு கட்டவிழ்க்கப்படுவான் என்று இது வேதாகமத்தினுடைய ஆதாரம் விழப்பட்ட தூதர்கள் கட்டவிழ்க்கப்படுவார்கள் என்று the spirits will be released inda vedagama oru sila udharanangale eppadi inda aavigal kattavilkapadum endradhai kurithu nam paarpom in revelation chapter 9 verses 1 and 2 velippaduthina vishesham 9th adhigaram 1 2 vasanathil you will read that a star fell from heaven anda idathile vaanathilirundhu bhoomiyin mel oru natchatram vilundathu endru nam vaasikkirom stars refers to or signifies angels natchatram enbadu deva thoodargalai kurikkirathu see the scripture says a star fell down from heaven vedagam migavum telivaga solgirathu vaanathil irundhu oru natchatram keelai velundathu endru a fallen angel or vilundhu pona thoodan and he opens the bottomless pit avan baadala kuliyai terakkiran so when he opens the bottomless spirit avan inda baadala kuliyin aaviye kattavilkum bodhu The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 9 verse 11 வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் 9 ஆம் அதிகாரம் 11 ஆம் வசனத்தில் வேதாகமம் சொல்கிறது that there are some fallen angels who oversee the prison cells in hell விழுந்து போன ஊர் சில தூதர்கள் நரகத்திலே இருக்கிற அறைகளை அவர்கள் மேற்பார்வையிடுகிறார்கள் பெயர்களை வேதாகமம் நமக்கு சொல்கிறது this particular fallen angel in that portion of hell is called abaddon abaddon endra pere konda or vilundu pona thoodan and the naragathin pagudile irukiran and the word abaddon means destroying angel abaddon endral sangarikra thoodan endra avanukku peyar and the word abaddon comes from the greek word abaddon abaddon endra vaarthai greek moola bhashil abaddon endra vaarthai irundhu varigirathu means abaddon abaddon and abaddon means perishing or hell abaddon endral naragathile alindhu pogirathu endra artham so if you put these two words together we have a meaning like this inda irandu vaarthigalum ondraga inaithal ipdi patta or artham varum abaddon is a destroying angel of hell Abaddon endrathu naragathile irukkakoodiya or alikum thoodan and this word abaddon also means apollyon abaddon ku innoru artham enna endral apollyon endru and apollyon means a destroyer of satan apollyon endral satane alikkakoodiyavan satanoodiya alikum thoodan is an destroying angel of satan or satan's destroying angel satan udiya alikum thoodan endradhu apollyon udiya artham now look at these scriptures very carefully in the veda vasanangale gavanamaga gavaniyungal the bible says when this fallen angel opens up the bottomless pit vedagamum migavum alagaga solgirathu inda vilundhu pona thoodargal inda baadala kuliyai terakkum bodhu you know i want you to notice one thing ஒரு காரியத்தை நீங்கள் கவனிக்க வேண்டும் ஐ வாண்ட் யூ டு பிளீஸ் டேக் நோட் ஆஃப் ரெவலேஷன் நைன் வர்சஸ் ஒன் அண்ட் டூ 
வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் ஒன்பதாம் அதிகாரம் ஒன்றாம் வசனம் இரண்டாம் வசனத்தை குறித்துக் கொள்ளுங்கள் அங்கே வேதாகமம் சொல்கிறது இந்த விழுந்த தூதனுடைய கரத்தில் ஒரு திறவு கோல் கொடுக்கப்பட்டது என்று அந்த திறவு கூலை கொண்டு அவன் அந்த பாதாள குழியை திறந்தான் ஓபன் ஒரு திறவு கூலை கொண்டு நாம் ஒன்று ஒரு கதவை திறப்போம் அல்லது ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய கேட்டை ஓபன் செய்வோம் இந்த விழுந்து போன தூதன் நரகத்தில் இருந்த ஒரு வாசலை திறக்க இந்த திறவு கோலை பயன்படுத்தினான் என்று விழுந்து போன ஒரு துன்மார்க்க ஒரு ஆவி கட்டவிழ்க்கப்பட்டது வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் ஒன்பதாம் அதிகாரம் மூன்றாம் வசனத்திலிருந்து ஆறாம் வசனம் சொல்கிறது ஒரு உலகம் அளவான ஒரு கொலையையும் ஒரு உயிர்த்தத்தையும் உண்டு பண்ணினான் பயங்கரமான யுத்தங்களும் யுத்தங்கள் மூலமாக கொலை அநேக கொலைகள் பூமி எங்கும் பல இடங்கள்ல நடந்தது இந்த தூதர் மூலமாக திஸ் ஏஞ்சல் விக்கெட் ஃபாலன் ஏஞ்சல் காஸ்ட் மச் கீலிங்ஸ் அண்ட் வாஸ் in many parts of the world in the vilindu pona tunmarka thudan anega yuthangalayum anega kollai kollaigalayum ulagam muluvudum undu paninan at this moment you may think in your heart in the vinadi neengal ungal hridayathile ninaithukondirukkalam how could a fallen angel cause worldwide killing எப்படி ஒரு விழுந்து போன தூதன் இப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு காரியத்தை செய்ய முடியும் இஃப் யூ ரீட் ரெவலேஷன் சாப்டர் 20 வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் 20 ஆம் அதிகாரத்தை நீங்கள் வாசித்தீர்கள் என்றார் தி பைபிள் சேஸ் வேதாகமம் சொல்கிறது আফட்டர் சேதன் ஹஸ் பீன் ரிலீஸ் फ्रॉम 1000 இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் இம்பிரிசன்மென்ட் ஓர் ஆயிரம் ஆண்டுகள் சிறை இருப்பில் இருந்து சாத்தானானவன் கட்டவிழ்க்கப்பட்டு விடும் பொழுது ஹி வென் டு த நேஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட் அண்ட் டேர்ன் தேம் அகேன்ஸ்ட் த லிவிங் காட் தேசங்களுக்குள்ளாக அவன் கடந்து சென்று ஜீவனுள்ள தேவனுக்கு எதிராக அவர்களை திசை திருப்பினான் மூன்றே ஆண்டு காலமாக அவன் ஒவ்வொரு பட்டணமாக ஒவ்வொரு தேசமாக சென்று அங்கு இருக்கிற எல்லா மக்களையும் தேவனுடைய நகரத்துக்கு விரோதமாக தேவனுக்கு விரோதமாக அவர்களை ஆயத்தம் பண்ணினான் absolutely possible for these wicked spirits to do those works agave ipidipatta karyangalai seiya inda tunmarka aavigalal koodum the lord jesus revealed andavaragi yesu christu velipaduthinar one particular fallen angel is going to be released or or kuripitta or vilindu pona thoodan kattavilkapada pogiran when he is released avan kattavilkapadum bolude he will unleash plagues and viruses upon mankind anega vidamana vaadigalum anega vidamana virusungalum manidargal meedu avan kattavilpan now look at what is happening in congo in the african continent africa kandathile congo endra maanilathile nadaiperugira kaariyathai gavanithu paarungal an ebola virus has broken out ebola virus endra oru kaariyam veduthu ullathu and more than 10 people have already died பத்துக்கு அதிகமானவர்கள் மறித்திருக்கிறார்கள் இந்த இபோலா வைரஸ் பட்டணம் முழுவதும் பரவக்கூடிய ஒரு அபாத்தமான ஒரு சூழ்நிலை நிலவுகிறது தேசம் முழுவதும் பரவி இந்த கொள்ளைனை பரவி அநேக கொடூரங்களை நிகழ்த்த ஒரு அபாயம் உள்ளது என்று அந்த தேசத்துடைய சுகாதார அமைச்சர் எச்சரிப்பு விடுத்துள்ளார் நாட் ஓன்லி தட் even the world health organization has issued a warning that this ebola virus can spread to other neighboring countries in africa africa will ulla matta ande maanilangalukkum matta ande desangalukkum inda ebola virus parava koodum endru ulaga sugadhara mayam mattravargal echarithu ullathu not only in africa even in india there's one problem 
Africa Kandatil Matra Malla, India Willum Bear or Prachana. There is a state in India called Kerala. Kerala and Urman Ilum, India will Ulla there. In one city there, a virus called Nipah virus has broken out. Ange Ur Patanathile, Nipah virus and Ur virus Paravi Kondirikara. And many people have already died. Because of that virus. And the virus in Nimitta Maga, Anegar Air Kanave, Maritirikirarga. Now, this word the Lord spoke to me on the 17th of May 2018. In the Kariang Lake Kurit, Andavarage Yesu Christu, May Padinelam De, the Rendaiti Padanetil, and Oda Kodapesina. It was after that that these viruses began to break out. You were Pesina, other Karpram than Ipripata or virus singer, Ella Idatilam Paravaram Bita there. So a gate in hell will be opened. And a spirit, a wicked spirit will be released. And this spirit will release plagues, viruses upon mankind. In the Avi Tunmarka Avi Anade, Aneha Vidamana virus, Aneha Vidamana Vade, Mani the Rilmi, the Kondovarum. This kind of a wicked spirit is called Belzebub in the Bible. Ipripata Ur Tunmarka Avi, Belzebal, and Javeda Kamatele, Araka Padikara there. He is one of the seven chief wicked princes in hell. Even Naragatile Ula, Yale Ilavar Sergalil, Urven. And Belzebub means Prince of Flies. Belzebal Endral, Ekalin, Ilavarasan Endra Artham. And it is this spirit that is responsible for releasing viruses and sicknesses. In the Avi Dan, Ipripata virus, Ipripata Palavidamana, Kolle, Noigal, Boomin, me the Parava, the Kakarna Maherikere. Now you will read a biblical proof in the Holy Bible like this. In 2 Peter, sorry, in 2 Kings chapter 1 verse 2. Now Ahaziah fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go, inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Akron, whether I shall recover from this injury. Irenda Rajakal Undra Madhikari Mirandam Vasanam. Agasya Samaria will irkret and male vitilirinde great in Vali I Virinde Vyandi Pate in the Vyandi Ningi Pelepeno Endre Ekron and Devanage Bagal Sebu Vidatil Poi Visari Ingal Endre now you have a biblical proof that this Belzebub is responsible for releasing viruses and diseases. Ipurdu Ungalakur Vedagma Adara Mirkrad in the Belzebal Dan, Ipripata virus ngal, Ipripata noi gale, Nad Muru with them parapakarna ma irkra the entre. The Holy Spirit shows me one thing right now. Urkariate Parishutta Avianavar and a keeper, the Kanbikirar. The Bible calls Michael the chief prince in heaven. Vedag Mumma Miga Vele Pradana Asari and Pradana Tudar enter Alekira there. And the angel Gabriel is also called a chief prince angel. Gabriel Deva Tudarum Pradana Deva Tudar enter Aleka Padigara. So even in heaven there are many chief prince angels. Paraloga Tilekuda Anega Pradana Deva Tudargal Irikirargal. These chief prince angels are not just one angel. In the Pradana Deva Tudargal Ura Deva Tudan Allah. But they are a chief prince. Overseeing many millions of angels. In the Pradana Tudargal, Anega Aira Mana Deva Tudargal, made Parve Panikondir Kiraga. So, in the same manner, Adevana Maka, the Chief Prince Fallen Angels also have many wicked spirits under their control and supervision. In the Virindapona Deva Tudargal Kuda, Pradana Deva Tudargal, Pradana Tudargal, Naragatin Tudargal, Kile Kuda, Anega Pulla the Avigal, Vele Say the Kondir Kerade. And when a command is received or when these wicked spirits are released, in the Tunmarka Avigal or Katale Petrukulum Burde, Avagal Katavil the Vidapadum Burde, the wicked spirits under their control also go out to spread. These viruses and sicknesses. The Tunmarka Avigal, our Kilir Kravan drum, Kadan the Sendri, Ipripata virus, Ipripata Kulle, Noigale, Parapagendrana. So we have to be careful of these viruses that will spread even in India. Ipripata virus, India, Deshutilum, Parevi Kondarikra, the Nam Mikavum Chakra, the Agirka Vendom.
Now this Nipah virus has started at the bottom of India. Nipah virus in Bade India when Adi Talatilinda Arambitarikara. And Nipah virus is spread by bats. Nipah virus in Bade in the Vaval. Vaval Gal Parapa Padigra. And bats can fly anywhere. In the Vaval Gal Ingum Parandisella Mudium. I feel the Lord God warning us now. Ipurdum Andavragi is Christo Name Echerit Kondirkira. This virus can spread to the northern part of India. In the virus on a day, India win Vada Pagadi Kadan the Shella Mudium. So I ask all of you to pray sincerely to stop this virus from not coming out of the borders of Kerala. In the Kerala, they said they wit, Ipripata virus, Galveli, Varakuda, the end, Nam Yavurum Unipaka, Jebika Vendom. So, what is our safety? Namurudi, Padagapi, and it's good to take vaccination. Vaccination say the cold weather, Nalade, but more than that, Anal Adim Vida, only the blood, the muck of the blood of Jesus Christ can protect us. On the Bragi, Yesu Christu in Rathatin, Adiala, Muntra, Matram, Dan, Namle Padagaka, Mudium. If you read Exodus chapter twelve, Yatrakam, Panirenda, Madigaratin, Vasi Pirgal, and Tral, verse seven, verses twelve and thirteen. Elam Vasanam, Pananda Vasanam, Padimuntram Vasanam. There came a time when the Lord released and is destroying angel to go all over Egypt to kill all the firstborn. Or a Samiatil under a Sangarikra Tudane, Egypt the Muruadam Sentry, Ella Talit Pilagalim Sangarika Vendum Enter, Anapinar. But God told the prophet Moses, Anal under Mose Tirka der Sedam Sonakariam. Tell the children of Israel. Israel Makale Parthani Sole that they should offer a lamb as a sacrifice. Our Lord Aunt Kuti Baliah Eda Vendom and take the blood of the lamb and post it, paste, paint it on the doorpost of their house. Ningal Irkum Vidagal and the Aunt Kuti in Rathate Edith Ungalakaga Adeala Maha Ningal Pusa Vendom Entre. And when the destroying angel passes by in the street. And the Sangari come to then and the Teru Valiaka cut on the shellum burde. When he sees the blood mark, and the Ratta Karei Avan Parkum burde, he will pass that house. And the Vita Vita and cut on the shelluan. So, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters and sons and daughters, and a Karumi on a Sagodra Sagodri and Mahan Mahalgale, your safety is the mark of the blood of the Lord Jesus. Ungurudiya Padgap, Andavaragi, Esu Christuvin, Rathatin, Adayalam Dan. When you put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, Ungurudiya Viswasate, Andavaragi, Esu Christuvin, me the Wakeum Burde. When you confess Him as your Lord and God, Ungurudiya Vayinal, Avare Devan, Entrenigal, Arike Sayum Burde. When you believe in His all protecting power with all your heart, Aurude Sarva, Vallame, Padgapu Kudia, Vallame, Ningal. Your belief, your faith puts a mark of the blood of Jesus on your household and upon everyone in your family. Ungulodi, a visuasum, Ungulodi, a Nambike, Ungal Vidagali Lirkra, over with Medum, Ungal Illatin Medum, Andavragi, Esu Christuvin, Raptate, or Adayala Maga put to Wakeum. Only that. Is your protection. Adu matram dan ungalodiya padgaape. So a question can be asked now. Ippor the ningal or kelvi ket kalam. Why such atrocities are taking place? Yen ippri pato kodura mana kari engal nadi perigradhen. Whenever wickedness rises. Ippor the lam thunmal kam talithu kagirado. God will judge wickedness. Andavar thunmal kate nyayam tirpa. When innocent blood is shed in the land. Palila the Ratham Desa Telesinda Padumburde. The innocent blood will cry out to God. And the Wundrum Sayada and the Ratham Andavari Noki Kadarum. So much of innocent blood is now shed in our country. Anega Ratham in the Desa Telesinda Padigra there. So they are crying out to God. Our Galilam Devane Noki Kadari Kundir Kiraga. God takes vengeance because of the blood of the innocents. Our Lord, a ratthati nimitam devan pali vanga gira. And also because of wickedness. Adu matram alla tun markatthi nimitam ahum devan ipre patakariya teishe gira. That is why this torturous and tormentous are released. Agave dhan ipre patta vedane padutthagara khariyengal katta vilka padigira dhe. 
our safety is the mark of the blood of the lord jesus nammude paadugappu aandavarage yesu christuvin raathathin adayalam ondru maatram dhaan at the end of this program we are going to pray இந்த நிகழ்ச்சியின் நிறைவில் நாங்கள் உங்களுக்காக ஜெபிக்க போகிறோம் அண்ட் யூ கேன் ரிசீவ் த பிளட் ஆஃப் ஜீசஸ் கிரைஸ்ட் அப்பொழுது நீங்கள் ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்துவின் ரத்தத்தை பெற்றுக்கொள்ள முடியும் ஃபார் யுவர் ப்ரொடெக்ஷன் அண்ட் யுவர் ஃபேமிலிஸ் ப்ரொடெக்ஷன் உங்களுடைய பாதுகாப்புக்காகவும் உங்களுடைய குடும்பத்தின் பாதுகாப்புக்காகவும் not only from the viruses இந்த வைரஸஸிலிருந்து பாதுகாப்புக்கு மாத்திரம் அல்ல but also from hell நரகத்தில் இருந்தும் உங்களை பாதுகாக்க next we read in the bible அடுத்ததாக நாம் வேதாமகத்தில் வாசிக்கிறது நான்கு தூதர்கள் கட்டு கட்டுக்கட்டில் வைக்கப்பட்டு சிறைச்சாலையில் வைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் அநேக ஆண்டுகள் அநேக ஆயிரம் ஆண்டுகளாக இந்த தூதர்கள் கட்டி வைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் அவர்கள் சிறைசாலையில் வைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் வேதாகமம் சொல்கிறது வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் ஒன்பதாம் அதிகாரம் பதினாலாம் வசனத்தில் இருந்து பத்தொன்பதாம் வசனம் வரைக்கும் இந்த விழுந்த தூதர்கள் கட்டவிழ்க்கப்படுவார்கள் வேதாகமும் மிகவும் தெளிவாக அவர்கள் எங்கே இருக்கிறார்கள் என்பதை நமக்கு வெளிப்படுத்துகிறது இட் இஸ் இந்த கட்டவிழ்க்கப்படத்தில் நரகத்திலே உள்ள ஒரு வாசல் திறக்கப்பட போகிறது சோ வென் திஸ் விக்கெட் ஸ்பிரிட்ஸ் ஆர் ரிலீஸ் இந்த துன்மார்க்க ஆவிகள் கட்டவிழ்க்கப்படும் பொழுது பைபிள் டெல்ஸ் அஸ் a great war will break out in that region வேதாகமும் மிகவும் தெளிவாக சொல்கிறது ஒரு பெரிய யுத்தம் அந்த பகுதியிலே ஏற்படும் என்று the war is so great that 200 million soldiers will be involved in the war இந்த யுத்தமானது மிக பெரிய யுத்தமாக இருக்கும் கிட்டத்தட்ட இருபது கோடி ராணுவ தளபதிகள் அதில் பங்கேற்பார்கள் மனுஷரில் மூன்றில் ஒரு பங்கு கொள்ளப்படுவார்கள் இந்த யுத்தம் எவ்வளோ மகா பெரிய யுத்தமாக இருக்கும் என்பதை நாம் நினைக்கும் பொழுது அது மிகவும் பயங்கரமாக இருக்கிறது நான்கு விதமான கால கட்டங்களிலே இந்த நான்கு தூதர்கள் இந்த காரியங்களை நிறைவேற்றுவார்கள் எனக்கு மிகவும் அருமையான சகோதர சகோதரிகளே பைபிள் வேதாகமத்திலே ஒரு குறிப்பிட்ட ஒரு இடம் கொடுக்கப்பட்டுள்ளது மத்திய கிழக்கு மாகாணத்திலே எப்படிப்பட்ட காரியங்கள் நடைபெறுகிறது என்பதை குறித்து நீங்கள் உங்கள் கண்களை திறந்து பார்த்து கொண்டே இருக்க வேண்டும் அடுத்து நடைபெற போகிற காரியம் என்னவென்றால் திறக்கப்பட போகிறது விழுந்து போன தூதன் கட்டவிழ்க்கப்பட போகிறான் அவன் ஏற்கனவே கட்டவிழ்க்கப்பட்டு விட்டான் அந்த துன்மார்க்க ஆவியானது மக்கள் மத்தியில பாலியல் துன்மார்க்கத்தை உண்டு பண்ணும் and that is the reason why there is a sudden increase and in rising up of homosexuals and lesbians all over the world அதன் காரணமாக தான் உலகம் எங்கிலும் ஊரின சேர்க்கை மக்கள் அதிகமாக பெருகி கொண்டே இருக்கிறார்கள் you may have noticed this one thing நீங்கள் ஒரு காரியத்தை கவனித்திருக்க முடியும் வெரி ஓப்பன் மைண்டட் டுவர்ட்ஸ் 
அநேக தேசங்கள் அநேக கவர்மெண்ட்கள் இப்பொழுதும் தங்களுடைய மனதை திறந்து இப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு பாவ செயலுக்கு அவர்கள் வழிவகுத்து கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் என்பது தேவனுடைய பார்வையில் அருவருக்கப்பட ஒரு தக்க ஒரு காரியம் அது ஒரு அருவருக்கப்பட ஒரு காரியம் அது தேவனுடைய பார்வையில் ஒரு தீட்டான காரியம் wickedness adu or miga periya tun markam lord jesus said andavaragi yesu sonna in luke chapter 17 verse 28 luka 17 am adhigaram 28 am vasanathil the last days will be like the days of loth kadaisi kaalangal lothin kaalathai pole irukkum who is this loth the loth endral yaar you read about him in genesis chapter 19 ஆதி ஆகமம் பத்தொன்பதாம் அதிகாரத்தில் அவரை குறித்து நாம் வாசிக்கிறோம் அவன் தேவனுக்கு பயந்த ஒரு மனிதன் ஆனாலும் அவன் வாழ்ந்த பட்டணம் ஆனது முழுமையாக எல்லா விதமான அக்கிரம காரியங்களுக்கும் ஓரின சேர்க்கைக்கும் மக்கள் விற்கப்பட்ட ஒரு இடம் the cities of sodom and gomorrah ah sodom gomorrah patanangal evlo oru paavam nirainda patanangal enbadai neengal arindirukkireergala from the youngest to the oldest are involved in sexual abomination siruvar mudarkondu periyavar varai ella vayadinerum paaliyal vanmuraigalil eedpattullavargal they are homosexuals there ange oorina serkai makkal undu they are lesbians there ange irupalar ovvor oru kuda irukkira idangal undu pengal pengalodu serndu seiyum avalachana paava seyalgal and they are also men committing sexual uncleanness with little children அங்கே ஆண்கள் கூட சிறு பிள்ளைகளோடு கூட பாலியல் அசிங்கத்தை செய்து கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் நடைபெற்று அழித்து போட்டார் பட்டணத்திற்கு செல்வீர்கள் என்றால் இஸ்ரேல் பகுதியில் டெட் சி என்ற ஒரு இடம் இருக்கிறது இட் இஸ் அ வெரி வைட் ஏரியா ஆஃப் சி விச் த லெங்க் அண்ட் த பிரெத் இஸ் 60 மைல்ஸ் இன் லெங்க் அது ஒரு மிக பெரிய ஒரு கடல் and it's called dead seas அந்த கடலினுடைய பேர் சவக்கடல் and bible scholars tells us that is the exact spot where the twin cities sodom and gomorrah stood வேதாகம அறிவாளர்கள் என்ன சொல்கிறார்கள் என்றால் அந்த இடத்தில் தான் சரியாக சோதம் கொமோரா பட்டணம் இருந்தது என்று அக்கினால் அந்த இரண்டு பட்டணங்களும் ஒன்றுமில்லாமல் பற்றி எரிந்த பொழுது ஆகவே தான் அந்த இடத்தில் இருந்த தண்ணீர்கள் எல்லாம் உப்பு தன்மை அதிகமாக உள்ளதாக மாறியது சோ பிகாஸ் தி ஸ்பிரிட் ஹஸ் பீன் ரிலீஸ் இந்த ஆவி கட்டவிழ்க்கப்பட்டதின் காரணமாக இட் இஸ் வர்க்கிங் இன் many nations of the world turning the people towards this sexual abomination ipidipatta thunmarka aavigal makkalin idayathai aatkondu ulagam engilum ipidipatta aruvarpana kaaryangalai seiya thoondikonde irukirathu another gate is going to be open innoru vaasal terakkapada pogirathu and another wicked fallen spirit angel is going to be released innoru vilindu pona thunmarka thoodan kattavilkapada pogiran when he is released avan kattavilkapadum bolude he will cause civil unrest and anarchy all over the world avan ulnaattu amaidi inmai ulagam muluvadum or arajagamana or soolnelai kondu varvan this will fulfill what the lord jesus christ warned nation will turn against nation ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து எந்த காரியத்தை குறித்து நம்ம எச்சரித்தாலோ தேசங்கள் தேசங்களுக்கு விரோதமாக எழும்பும் என்பதை குறித்து அதை இந்த துன்மார்க்க ஆவிகள் நிறைவேற்றும் திஸ் விக்கெட் ஸ்பிரிட் will go and incite communal violence இந்த துன்மார்க்க ஆவிகள் தேசங்களுக்குள்ளாக கடந்து சென்று உள்நாட்டு அமைதியின்மையை கொண்டு வரும் 
people from different castes will begin to fight against one another. வெவ்வேறு ஜாதிகளில் இருக்கிற மக்கள் ஒவ்வொருக்கு விரோதமாக ஒருவர் எழும்புவார்கள் பீப்புள் பிலாங்கிங் டு டிஃபரெண்ட் ட்ரைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் வில் பிகின் டு ஃபைட் அகைன்ஸ்ட் ஒன் அனதர் ஜனங்கள் ஒவ்வொருக்கு விரோதமாக ஒருவர் எழும்பி அவர்கள் சண்டை போட ஆரம்பிப்பார்கள் this kind of communal violence civil unrest and anarchy will prepare the way for the anti christ to come and rule this world ipdi patta ul naatu amaidi inmai arajagam inda anti christu aanaven vandu ulagam aadikam selutha vali vagukkum when law and order breaks down all over the world சட்டம் ஒழுங்கு உலகம் எங்கிலும் அது உடைக்கப்படும் பொழுது the anti christ will rise up அந்த கிறிஸ்து எழும்புவான் and he will bring world domination under his control அவன் உலக ஆதிக்கத்தை தன்னுடைய கைகளிலே கொண்டு வருவான் and the bible tells us வேதாகமம் சொல்கிறது such wicked spirits that are released will empower the anti christ and the false prophet to work false signs wonders and miracles vedagam migavum telivaga namakku solgirathu ipidipatta tunmarka aavigal kattavilkapadum bolude ivargal andi kristuvukkum kalla theerkadarshigalukkum vendi adhigarathai koduthu avargal kalla upadesangal avargal kalla arpudangalai seiya idu vali vagukkum revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 14 வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் பதிமூன்றாம் அதிகாரம் பதினோராம் வசனம் முதல் பதினான்கு வரை சாப்டர் சிக்ஸ்டீன் வர்சஸ் தேர்ட்டீன் டு ஃபோர்டீன் பதினாறாம் அதிகாரம் பதிமூன்றாம் வசனம் பதினான்காம் வசனம் இட் டெல்ஸ் அஸ் தட் ஈவன் திஸ் விக்கெட் ஸ்பிரிட்ஸ் கேன் இமிடேட் miracles in the vasanangalil nam enna vaasikrom endral ipdi patta tunmarka aavigal arpudangal adayalangalai avargal adai pola seiya mudiyum that does not mean we don't recognize the work of the true holy spirit doing miracles and healings apdi endral nam unmaiyana parusutha aaviyanavar seigira arpudam adhisayangalai nam differentiate panna mudiyadhu endra artham alla if you read exodus chapter 7 and chapter 8 யாத்ராகமும் ஏழாம் அதிகாரம் எட்டாம் வசனத்தை எட்டாம் அதிகாரத்தை நீங்கள் வாசிக்கும் பொழுது தீர்க்கதரிசி மோசே எகிப்திற்கு கடந்து செல்லும் பொழுது பாரோ ராஜாக்கு முன்பாக அவர் நிற்கும் பொழுது அவர் தன்னுடைய கூலை கீழே போட்டார் அது ஒரு பாம்பாக மாறியது the similar miracle ange irundha mandravadigal kuda paro raja vidathil irundha mandravadigal kuda adhe pondra oru kaaryathe avargalaal seiya mudindathu you all know very well that moses was anointed by the power of the living god ungalku ellarkum therindha oru kaaryam enna endral mose unmaiyana meiyana jeevikra devanaale abhishekam pannapattavar and god gave him his power to demonstrate before pharaoh all these miracles devan thannudeya vallamaye mose ke edarku கொடுத்தார் என்றால் பாரோனுக்கு முன்பாக அவருடைய வல்லமையை வெளிப்படுத்துவதற்காக the egyptian magicians could also duplicate and work similar miracles egyptian mandravadigal kuda adhe pondra or arpudam adiyalathe avargalaliyum seiya mudindathu how did they work avargal eppadi velai seidargal this true this wicked spirits idu ippidipatta or thunmarka aavigalinal this demonic spirits that will work miracles the thunmarka aavigal arpudam adiyalangalai seiyum that is why the lord jesus christ warned us ஆகவே தான் ஆண்டவராகிய இயேசு கிறிஸ்து நாம எச்சரித்திருக்கிறார் லுக் அட் எ ட்ரீ எ ட்ரீ கேன் பி ஜட்ஜ் பை தி ஃப்ரூட் ஒரு மரத்தை நீங்கள் பார்ப்பீர்கள் என்றால் அந்த மரம் கொடுக்கிற கனியின் நிமித்தமாக அந்த மரத்தை குறித்து நீங்கள் நியாயம் தீர்க்க முடியும் இட் இஸ் தி லைஃப் ஸ்டைல் ஆஃப் எ மேன் ஆர் woman of god that will tell us whether they are true servants of god or not ஒரு தேவனுடைய ஊழியக்காரனின் வாழ்வு முறைமைகள் அவர்கள் உண்மையாகவே தேவனுடைய ஊழியரா அல்லையா என்பதை குறித்து வெளிப்படுத்தும் as the lord jesus showed me all this இப்படிப்பட்ட காரியங்களை ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து எனக்கு காண்பித்து கொண்டிருந்த பொழுது and then he began to show me some visions about several groups of people in hell நரகத்திலே இருக்கிற பலதரப்பட்ட மக்களை குறித்த தரிசனங்களை தேவன் எனக்கு காண்பிக்க ஆரம்பித்தார் the first group he showed me was christian ministers in hell அவர் காண்பித்த முதல் ஜனக்கூட்டம் என்னவென்றால் கிறிஸ்தவ தேவ ஊழியர்கள் i saw in the vision a big huge sign in a large prison cell called ministers 
என்னுடைய தரிசனத்திலே ஒரு பெரிய விளம்பர பழகையை நான் பார்த்தேன் அந்த இடத்திலே அது ஊழியர்கள் என்று எழுதப்பட்டிருந்தது Subdivided into many cells. அது இன்னும் அதிகமாக வகைப்படுத்தப்பட்டிருந்தது And ministers of different kind are thrown there. பல தரப்பட்ட ஊழியர்கள் அந்த இடத்திலே அவர்கள் தள்ளப்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் You may be shocked to hear this right now. இதை நீங்கள் கேட்கும் பொழுது மிகவும் அதிர்ச்சிக்குள்ளாவீர்கள் But the Lord Jesus Christ showed us very clearly in his word. ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து தம்முடைய வார்த்தையிலே மிகவும் தெளிவாக இதை வெளிப்படுத்தி இருக்கிறார் Firstly he gives a warning. முதலாவது ஒரு எச்சரிப்பை அவர் கொடுக்கிறார் Matthew chapter 7 மத்தேயு 7 ஆம் அதிகாரம் verses 21 to 23 21 ஆம் வசனம் முதல் 23 வரை He looks at a group of preachers and he tells them ஒரு குழுவை பார்த்து அவர் இப்படி சொல்கிறார் Get out வெளியே போங்கள் Go into outer darkness போய் அந்தகார இருளுக்குள் கடந்து செல்லுங்கள் You did not do my father's will நீங்கள் என் பிதாவின் சித்தத்தை நிறைவேற்றவில்லை Those ministers were shocked அந்த ஊழியர்கள் அப்படியே ஸ்தம்பித்து போனார்கள் Listen to what they said அவர்கள் சொன்ன காரியத்தை கவனித்து பாருங்கள் Lord we prophesied in your name தேவனே உம்முடைய நாமத்தில் நாம் தீர்க்க தரிசனம் சொன்னோம் We cast out demons in your name பிசாசுகளை உம்முடைய நாமத்தினால் நாங்கள் விரட்டினோம் We perform miracles in your names अनेக அற்புதங்களை உம்முடைய நாமத்தினாலே நாங்கள் செய்தோம் Now look at what they said அவர்கள் சொன்ன காரியத்தை கவனித்து பாருங்கள் They prophesied அவர்கள் தீர்க்க தரிசனம் சொன்னார்கள் They were prophets ஆகவே அவர்கள் தீர்க்க தரிசிகள் They did healings and miracles அவர்கள் अनेக அற்புதங்கள் சுகத்தை கொண்டு வந்தார்கள் So evangelists ஆகவே அவர்கள் சுவிசேஷகர்கள் They cast out demons அவர்கள் பிசாசுகளை விரட்டினார்கள் They were in deliverance ministry அவர்கள் விடுதலையின் ஊழியத்திலே இருந்தவர்கள் And they said we did that in your name இவை அனைவற்றையும் உம்முடைய நாமத்தினாலே நாங்கள் செய்தோம் என்று சொன்னார்கள் Then why did the Lord Jesus cast them out from his presence அப்படி என்றால் ஏன் தேவன் அவர்களை தம்முடைய சமூகத்திலிருந்து விரட்டினார் He did not deny that they did the work in his name avargal tammudaiya naamathinaale ella vidamana kaaryangalai seidhar enbadai devan purakanikkavillai adai avar marukkavillai aanalum avar sonnar en pidavin sithathai neengal seiyavillai but he said you did all that i acknowledge that but you did not do my father's will நீங்கள் இப்படிப்பட்ட காரியங்களை செய்தது உண்மைதான் ஆனாலும் நீங்கள் என் பரமபிதாவின் சித்தத்தை நிறைவேற்றவில்லை you built your own kingdom நீங்கள் உங்கள் சொந்த ராஜ்யத்தை நீங்கள் கட்டினீர்கள் you did your own ministry according to your own ways நீங்கள் உங்கள் சொந்த ஊழியத்தை உங்களுடைய வழியின்படியே நீங்கள் செய்தீர்கள் therefore be gone ஆகவே நீங்கள் கடந்து செல்லுங்கள் cast into outer darkness அவர்களை அந்தகார இருளுக்குள் தள்ளினார் outer darkness is a place in hell அந்தகார இருள் என்பது நரகத்திலே உள்ள ஒரு இடம் இட்ஸ் a place of hopelessness அங்கே ஓர் நம்பிக்கையே இல்லாத ஒரு இடம் where people be gnashing their teeth and weeping மக்கள் பட்களை கடித்து கொண்டு அங்கே அழுது கொண்டிருப்பார்கள் so this is the place where one group of ministers are இங்கே தான் ஒரு குழு ஊழியர்கள் இருக்கிறார்கள் and look at numbers chapter 16 என்னாகமம் என்னாகமம் 16 ஆம் 16 ஆம் அதிகாரத்தை நீங்கள் வாசித்து பாருங்கள் verses 25 to 35 25 ஆம் வசனம் முதல் 35 வரை a group of sons of levi come against the prophet moses லேவியின் புத்திரர்கள் ஒரு ஜன கூட்டம் மோசேக்கு விரோதமாக எழும்புகிறார்கள் Now the sons of Levi are also priests and ministers of God. லேவியின் புத்திரர்கள் தேவனுடைய ஊழியர்கள் தேவனுக்கு பணிவிடை செய்கிறவர்களாக இருந்தார்கள். They became very envious against the prophet Moses and his brother high priest Aaron. மோசே தீர்க்கதரிசிக்கு விரோதமாகவும் அவருடைய சகோதரன் ஏரோன விரோதமாகவும் இவர்கள் மிகவும் பொறாமை கொண்டார்கள். By the way you should take note of one thing. ஒரு காரியத்தை நீங்கள் கவனித்துக் கொள்ள வேண்டும். Moses and Aaron are also from the tribe of Levi. மோசே ஏரோன் கூட லேவியின் டிரைபை சேர்ந்தவர்கள். So they are all relatives. அவர்கள் எல்லாரும் சொந்த பந்துக்கள். But God chose Moses and Aaron out from there to be his spokesman. ஆனாலும் ஆண்டவர் மோசேயும் ஏரோனியும் அவர்கள் மத்தியிலிருந்து தன்னுடைய வாயாக இருக்க வேண்டும் என்று தேர்ந்தெடுத்தார் the sons of levi were also chosen by god to serve him லேவியின் புத்திரர் கூட ஆண்டவர் ஆலே தேர்ந்து கொள்ளப்பட்டவர்கள் அவருக்கு பணிவிடை செய்வதற்கு but 250 
princes among the sons of Levi became very envious against Moses and Aaron. Eranuti aim by the pair in the Levi in Butteral Matil Erikara Vergal Mose Kum Eronukum Viroda Mahaparame Kondarga. For the two hundred and fifty to rise up. In the Eranuti aim by the pair Edinburgh. There were three master mind. Moon to pair other Kapinaka Irandarga. Kora, Datan, and Abiram. Koran, Datan, Abiram. Those three stirred up. 250 sons of Levi against Moses. Ivaril Boonchu Perum Undraga Yina in the Eranotri Aim by the Levi in Butterle, Mose Kum Eronukum Viroda Maheri Pinarga. And the anger of God manifested. Devunodi a Koba Mandida Televeli Patta there. And the prophet Moses said, Apro the Tirkadarsi Mose Sonar. God will now prove that I am. Righteous before his eyes. Devan Ipur then our Parveki Nidi Ulavanaga Yrikrain and Bade Ungala Kaveli Patatava. He said, I have kept my hands clean. Enude Karangalina and Sutta Mahaveta Rekre. I have not taken anybody's money. Nanyarudi a Panathium Anyaya Mahaved the Kola Villa. My heart is clean. Enude Yerathium Sutta Mana there. I have served God with a clear conscience. Or telling the Manadoda Kudan and Devan a Kuriam say their Kre. You are falsely accusing me. Ningle and a Tavaraka Kutram Kandapatik. So let God now vindicate who is right. And over Yipro de Yar Seri and Bade Nyayam Tirtha Solatum. Let the earth open up and swallow these people alive. Boomiana the Pirande in the Makale, we rode a Kodavirangatum. Let that be a sign to everybody that these have sinned. இவர்கள் பாவம் செய்தார்கள் என்பதற்கு இது எல்லாருடைய மத்தியிலும் ஒரு அடையாளமாக விளங்கட்டும் as soon as those words came out of the lips of the prophet moses மோசே தீர்க்கதரிசியின் வாயிலிருந்து இந்த வார்த்தைகள் வெளியே வந்தவுடன் there was an earthquake அப்பொழுது ஒரு பூமி அதிர்ச்சி உண்டானது and the earth opened up and the boomi and the irandaha pelandade and all the people who rose against moses went alive down to hell Mose ke viroda mak ayat ini na ane itu jana kutamum uirod kuda pada kapata argal naragatter Kristen argal. That's what the Bible says, you know. Ida idan weda hamam nama Kristol gira de. They went a life down to hell. Our uirod kuda badalat terkule katan de sentra argal. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, and ministers of God. Ena karumi ana sahodre sahodri le makan mahal le dewnu de uli argal. Let us take this as a warning. Idai ura ecri pahen ame ditekolubong. Then I saw another cell. Inu ura ura arai nen parten. This is for those who have betrayed and backslided away from the call of God. Dewnu dia arai pe maradalitte dewnu dia telirin de pinwangi pon awril kana ura idam. And the Lord Jesus showed me. Anu ura agi Yesus Kristus ena ke kan bita. People like Judas are kept there. Yudas ay pun dr makal angge wake up ateri kerar gar. No many Christians backslide. Aneka Kristu wargal pin wang girar gar. But they can repent and come back. Anal awargal manan tirumbi marbadiyum waram mudiyum. But there is a group of people who backslide permanently. Anal urus sila jana kutam nirandra maha pin wangi pohirar gar. They totally turn their backs against the living God. Awargal nirandra maha tanglode mukhanggalay tirupi dev jiwanulla dewan kebiroda maha katandu selindro bide girar gar. It is those kind of people who will be kept in those cells. Apri pata jananggal dan apri pata idatle wake up padu warger. Then I saw another cell. Inno oru oru arayin an parthen. These are for special wicked people like Haman. Haman ay pon dr thunmar ka makkal kaaga ser ka pata oru ida madhe. And they are kept in special cell. Aur le apri pata oru vinoda mana oru arayile wake up pate rikhar gar. Now who is Haman? In the Haman yar. He is a wicked man who plotted. To kill God's people. Awan or tuh mak kemana mani den dewan udah pilih lek kuai seva dar kago or titam titi naven. This is a clear warning to all those who are rising up and plotting to kill the ministers of God and the children of God. Dewan udah uli erigilum, dewan udah pilih erigilum, kuai seva dar kago titam titi gara orang lek kago dewan erat telindu kodukka padigira ur yacerip ede. Such people, workers of iniquity. Ipri pata tuh mar ka uli atas segera wargar. Your end is in hell. Unggul udia mudiv naragatil. Be careful. Cakar dia aga iringgal. If you repent right now, ipur dengan engal manan terumbi wergal entral. The mercy of God will be for you. 
தேவனுடைய இரக்கம் உங்களுக்காக வைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கும் பட் இஃப் யூ வில் ஹார்டன் யுவர் ஹார்ட் டுடே ஆனால் உங்கள் இருதயத்தை இன்றைய தினம் நீங்கள் கடினப்படுத்துவீர்கள் என்றால் லெட் இட் பி நோன் டு யூ பை த அத்தாரிட்டி ஆஃப் த வேர்ட் ஆஃப் காட் தேவனுடைய வார்த்தையில் உள்ள அதிகாரத்தின் மூலமாக உங்களுக்கு தெரியப்படுத்தட்டும் யூ வில் சடன்லி டை இன் யுவர் சின்ஸ் உங்களுடைய பாவத்திலே நீங்கள் திடீர் என்று மறித்து விடுவீர்கள் அண்ட் யூ வில் பி கஸ் இன் டு ஹெல் நீங்கள் நரகத்திலே தள்ளப்படுவீர்கள் தென் தேர் இஸ் another cell இன்னொரு அறை உண்டு this cell is only for adulterers homosexuals and lesbians in the ida manadu vibacharam seigiravargal oorinai serkeyil irukiravargalukku maatram vaikkapatta or arai the bible tells us in first corinthians chapter 6 ondru korithiyar aaram adhigarathil vedagamam solgirathu verse 9 onbadam vasanam ephesians chapter 5 verse 5 ebesiyar 5th adhigaram 5th vasanam revelation chapter 21 verse 8 velippaduthana vishesham 21st adhigaram 8th vasanam chapter 22 verse 15 22nd adhigaram 15th vasanam that all those who practice such sexual uncleanness will never enter into heaven ipdi patta paaliyal thunmarkathil eedu padugiravargal paralogathil praveshippadillai now you ponder for a moment now ஒரு சில வினாடி இதை குறித்து நினைவுத்து பாருங்கள் நீங்கள் பரலோகத்திற்கு செல்ல முடியவில்லை என்றால் வேறு எங்கு செல்வீர்கள் பரலோகத்திற்கு எதிரான ஒரு இடம் நரகம் எனக்கு அருமையான சகோதர சகோதரிகளே I feel in my spirit two kinds of emotions right now. இப்பொழுது இரண்டு விதமான உணர்ச்சிகளை என்னுடைய ஆவியிலே நான் உணர்கிறேன். One I feel a terror. ஒரு பக்கத்திலே ஒரு ஒரு பயம் இருக்கிறது. Second I feel compassion. மறு பக்கத்திலே இரக்கத்தை நான் உணர்கிறேன். I believe these are the emotions and the feelings of the Lord God himself. இப்பொழுதும் நான் விசுவாசிக்கிறது என்னவென்றால் இது ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்துவினுடைய உணர்ச்சிகள் என்று இவன் நவ் ஐ சி ஹிஸ் பியூட்டிஃபுல் ஃபேஸ் ஸ்டாண்டிங் பிஃபோர் மீ இப்பொழுது கூட நான் அவருடைய அழகான முகம் எனக்கு முன்பாக நிற்கிறது என்றால் காண முடிகிறது ஐ சி ஹிஸ் வண்டர்ஃபுல் ஃபேஸ் ஆஃப் லவ் அண்ட் கம்பேஷன் லுக்கிங் அட் யூ அவருடைய அன்பு நிறைந்த முகம் இரக்கம் நிறைந்த முகம் உங்களை நோக்கி பார்த்து கொண்டிருக்கிறது என்றால் உணர முடிகிறது ஐ சி ஹிஸ் ஐஸ் ஆஃப் லவ் லுக்கிங் அட் யூ அவருடைய அன்பு நிறைந்த கண்கள் உங்களை நோக்கி பார்த்து கொண்டிருக்கிறது என்றால் பார்க்க முடிகிறது ஆல் தோஸ் ஆஃப் யூ ஹூ ஆர் ட்ரப் இன் அ லைஃப் ஸ்டைல் ஆஃப் ஹோமோசெக்ஷுவலிசம் லெஸ்பியனிசம் அண்ட் ஃபோனிகேஷன் அண்ட் அடல்ட்ரி விபச்சார ஆவி ஓரின சேர்க்கை ஆவி இப்படிப்பட்ட பாவ காரியங்களிலே சிக்கொண்டிருக்கிற ஒவ்வொருவரும் ப்ளீஸ் ரிப்பென் நவ் இப்பொழுதே மனம் திரும்புங்கள் இஸ் saying to you அவர் உங்களை பார்த்து சொல்கிறார் மை டியர் சன் மை டியர் டாட்டர் எனக்கு அருமையான மகன் எனக்கு அருமையான மகளே டர்ன் பேக் फ्रॉम யுவர் விக்கெட் வேஸ் உன்னுடைய பொல்லாத வழிகளிலிருந்து மனம் திரும்ப ஐ will restore you நான் உன்னை மறுபடியும் புதுப்பிப்பேன் ஐ will make you whole நான் உன்னை மறுபடியும் முழுமையாக மாற்றுவேன் ஐ will give you a new life உனக்கு ஒரு புதிய வாழ்க்கையை நான் தருவேன் டர்ன் பேக் फ्रॉम யுவர் விக்கெட் வேஸ் அண்ட் வாக் வித் மீ இன் ஒயிட் உனுடைய பொல்லாத வழிகளை விட்டு என்னோடு கூட வெண்மையில் நட and another cell இன்னொரு அறை is for the sorcerers the witches and magicians சூனியக்காரர்கள் மந்திரவாதிகளுக்காக வைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிற ஒரு அறை the bible tells us in revelation chapter 21 verse 8 and 22 verse 15 வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் இருபத்தி ஓராம் அதிகாரம் எட்டாம் வசனம் இருபத்தி ரெண்டாம் அதிகாரம் பதினைந்தாம் வசனத்தில் வேதாகமம் சொல்கிறது ஆல் கைண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் சாஸ்ரஸ் அண்ட் மெஜிஷியன்ஸ் அண்ட் விச்சஸ் ஃப்ரம் ஆல் ஓவர் த வேர்ல்ட் வில் பி கஸ் இன் டு தட் செல் இன் ஹெல் எல்லா விதமான சூனியக்காரர்கள் மந்திரவாதிகள் உலகத்தின் எத்திசையிலும் இருக்கிறவர்கள் அப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு அறையிலே தள்ளப்படுவார்கள் இன் அமெரிக்கா தி மெனி மெனி விச்சஸ் அமெரிக்க தேசத்தில் நீங்கள் பார்த்தீர்கள்னா அநேக விதமான மந்திரவாதிகள் உண்டு சூனியக்காரர்களும் மந்திரவாதிகளும் அங்கே அமெரிக்கா தேசத்தில் திரளாய் இருக்கிறார்கள் அண்ட் சம் ஆஃப் தெம் கால் தெம் செல்ஸ் ஒயிட் விச்சஸ் ஓர் சிலர் அவர்களை வெள் வெள்ளை சூனியக்காரர்கள் என்று அழைத்துக் கொள்வார்கள் அண்ட் வென் ஐ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஹர்ட் அபவுட் திஸ் ஐ வாண்டட் வாட் இஸ் ஒயிட் விச்சஸ் நான் இதை முதலாவது கேள்விப்பட்ட பொழுது இப்படி என்றால் என்ன என்று யோசித்துக் கொண்டிருந்தேன் ஸோ ஐ வாஸ் டோல் தே ஆர் ஒயிட் விச்சஸ் அண்ட் தே ஆர் பிளாக் விச்சஸ் வெள்ளை சூனியக்காரர்கள் கருப்பு சூனியக்காரர்கள் என்று நான் சொல்லப்பட்டேன் ஸோ பிளாக் விச்சஸ் டூ ஹம்ஃபுல் மேஜிக் 
or portion for others enchantment against others karpu sunya kharagal migavum kodi koduramana mandravada karyangale mattravargalukku virodhamaga evi viduvargal and white witches do good magic for others வெள்ளை சூனிய காரர்கள் நல்ல மந்திர சக்திகளை மக்களுக்கு செய்வார்கள் வெள்ளை சூனிய காரர்கள் கருப்பு சூனிய காரர்கள் என்று ஒரு காரியம் இல்லவே இல்லை ஒரு மந்திரவாதி ஒரு சூனிய காரர் என்பது சூனிய காரர்கள் அப்படிப்பட்ட சூனிய காரர்கள் மந்திரவாதிகள் எல்லோரும் நரகத்திலே தள்ளப்படுவார்கள் Finally the Lord Jesus Christ told me to warn you. கடைசியாக ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து உங்களை எச்சரிக்கும்படி என் இடத்துல சொன்ன காரியம். This is a warning to all Christians who are watching and hearing right now. இது பார்த்து கொண்டிருக்கிற எல்லா கிறிஸ்தவ மக்களுக்கும் ஒரு எச்சரிப்பு. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 to 11 warns us. வெளிப்படுத்தின விசேஷம் பதினான்காம் அதிகாரம் ஒன்பதாம் வசனம் முதல் பதினோராம் வசனம் நமக்கு ஒரு எச்சரிப்பை கொடுக்கிறது கிறிஸ்தவர்கள் அந்த கிறிஸ்துவின் அடையாளத்தை பெற்றுக்கொள்கிறவர்கள் நரகத்திலே தள்ளப்படுவார்கள் அந்தி கிறிஸ்துவின் முத்திரையே எக்காரணத்து நிமித்தமும் எந்த கிறிஸ்தவனும் அதை எடுத்தாலும் நீங்கள் எரி நரகத்துக்குள் தூக்கி எறியப்படுவீர்கள் நோ மேட்டர் ஃபார் வாட் ரீசன் எந்த காரணத்திற்காக இருந்தாலும் சரி கிறிஸ்டியன் இஃப் ஹி அக்செப்ட்ஸ் தி மார்க் ஆஃப் தி பீஸ் ஹி will be cast into hell கிறிஸ்தவன் அந்தி கிறிஸ்துவின் முத்திரையை பெற்றுக்கொள்ளும் பொழுது அவன் நரகத்துக்குள்ளே தள்ளப்படுவான் ப்ளீஸ் டோன்ட் டிசீவ் யுவர் செல்ஃப் இன்டு திங்கிங் God understands my situation. நீங்கள் உங்களையே ஏமாத்தி கொள்ளாதீர்கள் தேவன் என்னுடைய சூழ்நிலையை புரிந்து கொள்வார் என்று. When you take the mark of the beast. நீங்கள் அந்தி கிறிஸ்துவின் அடையாளத்தை நீங்கள் பெற்றுக்கொள்ளும் பொழுது முத்திரையை பெற்றுக்கொள்ளும் பொழுது. It signifies that you are now totally giving yourself to the worship of the devil. அது என்ன வெளிப்படுத்துகிறது என்றால் நீங்கள் முற்றிலுமாக உங்களை பிசாசை ஆராதிக்க அர்ப்பணிக்கிறீர்கள் என்று. Many Christians deceive them selves like this today anega kristavargal thangale thane vanjithukonde irukkirargal oh god understands my heart devan en iradayathai purindukolvar my ex may be unchristian ennudaiya kadangalgal ennudaiya seyalgal andi kristuvin seyalgalai pole irukkalam but god sees my heart aanalum devan en iradayathai paarkirar please don't be fooled இப்படிப்பட்ட காரியங்களினாலே நீங்கள் ஏமாற்றப்படாதீர்கள் நீங்கள் தேவனை வஞ்சிக்க முடியாது நீங்கள் அந்த கிறிஸ்துவின் முத்திரையை பெற்றுக்கொண்ட உடனே யூ வில் பி டும் டு ஹெல்ப் ஃபார் எவர் நீங்கள் நரகத்திற்காக நியமிக்கப்பட்டிருப்பீர்கள் நித்திய நித்தியமாய் மை டியர்லி பிலவட் பிரதர்ஸ் அண்ட் சிஸ்டர்ஸ் சன்ஸ் அண்ட் டாட்டர்ஸ் எனக்கு அருமையான சகோதர சகோதரியே மகன் மகள்களே தி லார்ட் ஜீசஸ் கிறைஸ்ட் இஸ் கமிங் சூன் டு ஜட்ஜ் தி சர்ச் அண்ட் ஜட்ஜ் தி வேர்ல்ட் ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து மிக சீக்கிரமாக சபையையும் இந்த உலகத்தையும் நியாயம் தீர்க்க வர போகிறார் டு யூ வாண்ட் டு எஸ்கேப் फ्रॉम தி வ்ரத் டு கம் வரப்போகிற கோபாக்கினிலிருந்து தப்பித்துக் கொள்ள நீங்கள் விரும்புகிறீர்களா டு யூ வாண்ட் டு எஸ்கேப் फ्रॉम திஸ் ஹெல் ஃபயர் நீங்கள் இந்த நரக தீயிலிருந்து தப்பித்துக் கொள்ள விரும்புகிறீர்களா only the lord jesus christ can save you ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்து மாத்திரம்தான் உங்களை രക്ഷிக்க முடியும் i am going to pray for you right now இப்பொழுதும் நான் உங்களுக்காக ஜெபிக்க போகிறேன் please get up from your chairs and kneel down right now நீங்கள் யாவரும் எழுந்து இப்பொழுது முழங்கால் படியிடுங்கள் even your little children in your house please ask them to kneel down right now ungal veetile irukkira ovvoru siru pillaigalai kooda ippozhudhu mulangal padiyida sollungal please don't be shy neengal vetkapadadirgal maybe you may feel a little difficult to get up from your chair but please do so ungalku kadinamaga irukkalam ungalude naatkalil irundhu elumbuvatharku aanal daiva seidhu mulangal idungal bow your head and close your eyes right now ungal thalaigalai thaalthi ungal kangalai moodungal my dearly beloved brothers and sisters sons and daughters ena karumiyana sahodra sahodrigale magan magalgale hell is real naragam nicham and the gates of hell are been opened naragathin vaasalgal terakkapatirukirathu do you want to escape from this terrors of hell 
இந்த நரகத்தின் பயங்கரத்தில் இருந்து நீங்கள் உங்களை தப்பித்துக் கொள்ள விரும்புகிறீர்களா only the lord jesus christ can save you andavaragi yesu christu maatram naan ungalai kaapaatra mudiyum if today you want to accept the lord jesus christ as your lord and savior indriya dinathilil neengal andavaragi yesu christuvai ungaludaiya rakshakaraga yetrukolla virumbinal i see an angel standing on my right side with a book in his hand to write your names in the book of life enude valadu pakkathile oru deva thoodar kadanude karathile oru puthagathai veithukonde nirpadai naan paarkiren ungalude peyare jeeva pusthagathil eluvadarkaga whatever faith you may belong to ningal endha vidamana madha nambike ullavargalaga irundhalum seri only the lord jesus christ can save you andavaragi yesu christu maatram naan ungalai kaapaatra mudiyum do you want to receive the mark of the blood of the lord jesus christ andavaragi yesu christuvin raktathin muthriyai ningal petrukolla virumbeerigala take your right hand and you put on your heart right now உங்களுடைய வலது கரத்தை எடுத்து உங்கள் இருதயத்தின் மீது வைத்துக் கொள்ளுங்கள் நீங்கள் கடந்து வந்த எல்லா விதமான துன்மார்க்க வாழ்க்கையில் இருந்து மனம் திரும்ப விரும்புகிறீர்களா homosexuality and lesbianism or in a serke vaalkeyil irundhu neengal veli vara virumbugireergala or you may even be a transgender <coughs> transgender thirunangai நீங்கள் ஒரு திருநங்கையாக கூட இருக்கலாம் அப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு வாழ்க்கையிலிருந்து நீங்கள் வெளிவர விரும்புகிறீர்களா உங்களுக்கு ஒரு நம்பிக்கை உண்டு ஆண்டவராகி இயேசு கிறிஸ்து ஒருவரால் மாத்திரம் தான் உங்கள் வாழ்க்கையை சரி செய்ய முடியும் community. எனக்கு மிகவும் அருமையான திருநங்கை சமுதாயத்தை சேர்ந்தவர்களே காட் கேன் ரிஸ்டோர் யுவர் லைஃப் ஆண்டவராலே உங்களுடைய வாழ்க்கையை தழகீலாக மாற்ற முடியும் ஹி கேன் மேக் யூ நியூ அவர் உங்களை புதிதாக மாற்ற முடியும் ஹி கேன் ரிஸ்டோர் தி ரைட்ஃபுல் இமோஷன்ஸ் இன் யுவர் லைஃப் உங்களுடைய வாழ்க்கையிலே சரியான உணர்ச்சிகளை அவராலே சரி செய்ய முடியும் ஹி இஸ் எக்ஸ்டெண்டிங் ஹிஸ் ஹேண்ட் டு யூ அவர் தம்முடைய கரங்களை உங்களுக்கு நேராக நீட்டிக்கொண்டே இருக்கிறார் கம் அவுட் ஆஃப் தட் அன்கிளீன் லைஃப் ஸ்டைல் அப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு துன்மார்க்கமான வாழ்க்கையிலிருந்து நீங்கள் வெளியே வாருங்கள் கம் அவுட் ஆஃப் தட் லைஃப் ஆஃப் அபாமினேஷன் அருவெறுப்பான ஒரு வாழ்க்கையிலிருந்து வெளியே வாருங்கள் சரண்டர் டு ஹிம் அவரிடத்திலே உங்களை முற்றிலும் அர்ப்பணியுங்கள் இஃப் யூ டோட்டலி சரண்டர் நீங்கள் முற்றிலுமாக உங்களை அர்ப்பணித்தீர்கள் என்றால் not only your sins will be forgiven you உங்களுடைய பாவம் மன்னிக்கப்படுகிறது மாத்திரமல்ல but he will make all things new in a half strength did you have your dinner yes okay those who are saying no means you will have later all right please turn your bibles with me to the book of revelation and the chapter 21 So technically the Median Women's Conference 2 ended few hours ago. Technically it ended. So now is bonus time. Wow. Uh, Amen. Yes. So all you wonderful saints are getting a bonus. See how wonderfully good you all are. Blessed. Amen. and all because our god is a good god amen. he always gives to us more than what we ask or think amen, amen. <clears throat> so 3 days ago i was uh, meditating the word of god one morning I mean that morning and as i was meditating this scripture revelation chapter 21 verse 3 and when when i meditated the scripture no i have read the scripture if not thousands of time at least hundreds of times and because of my uh, specific call to speak on end times and in the last days i have literally read the book of revelation many many times over and over again but i'm sure you all know very well that no matter how many hundreds if not thousands of times you read the bible the hundred and one time when you read you will still find something new am i right yes even if you read a million times the million and one time you will still find something new am i right everybody yes. 
But this is not true for any other fairy tale books or any other books that you will read. Am I right? Okay, what's the difference? The difference is those books are just books. This is spirit and life. That's the difference. Not only that, every word of God, the Bible tells us, is a multifaceted dimension of revelation. Every scripture, not only every scripture, even every word in a scripture, it's like looking through a prism. When you look through a prism, you see different facets of light, different facet of color. So each scripture, each word has a multi-cornered revelation. That is the reason why you read umpteen times, you always find something new. That's number one. <clears throat> number two, why you find something new? The revelation that you have known before, from, that you got from the same scripture, now you find something new. Why? It is because of your level of spiritual growth. And when you grow, let's say last year, just give you a simple illustration. Let's say last year you were in primary one, standard one, year one. And now in this year you are primary two. So your understanding differs, right? Not, I'm not talking about natural wisdom, say spiritual wisdom. So because now you have grown one level higher, now when you look at the scripture, light will come to you at that level now. It's the same scripture. But now, the revelation in the scripture that was hidden for you to understand when you reach level 2 was always there. From level 1 to level 12 or even until the day you die. So not you die, you don't die, I die. <laughs> because dying is a bad word, right? You all don't like to hear that. Okay, I die. No. Okay, you don't die, I don't die, then who die? <laughs> Somebody has to die, ma. <clears throat> Noah. <laughs> okay, devil die. I mean, <laughs> okay, that is for sure. That is for sure. Confirm. Right? He is dying. Once and for all, destroyed forever and ever. Amen. That is confirmed. Amen. So, now the devil is already darkness now. Okay, wait. So, from the day that you are born again, light increases in you. So, also the understanding in the word increases. <clears throat> so, that morning when I was reading this scripture, I suddenly, my eyes fell on three words. Okay, before I tell you those three words, let us read the scripture. Let us all read together. At the count of three, I want you to open your mouth and read aloud. Kaima. Okay. Bole. Bole. All right. Beyond that, I don't know any other language. <laughs> all right. Ready? One, two, three. I want you to do one more thing now. This time, I want you to read slower. Slower. Because when you just read through, you read through normal speed. Now I want you to read slower. And I will tell you something. That which you did not see earlier, now you will see. Ready? One, two, three. Did you find something? 
Okay, in case you didn't find, one more exercise. This time we read slower. Like for example, and I heard slower, okay? Slower. Now, when you read, don't just read. Your mind focus on what you are reading. Then you will see something. Your mind must focus. The reason why many times we miss nuggets of wisdom in the Word of God because our mind is wandering around. <coughs> we are reading, but our mind is wandering around. So now read slower, but your mind must focus on what you are reading. Ready, everybody? <coughs> you know, no matter what digital age we live, must always have good old Bible. Amen. Good old Bible. Nothing can replace good old paper Bible. So you can always underline with multicolored ink. <laughs> right? I do that, no? I have a pen with four colors. One I use red, another use green, sometimes blue. See, you can't do that on digital. You cannot. All right? Next time you come to a conference, bring real Bible. We'll put that in our leaflet. Bring real Bible. Ready? One, two, three. Each time you read the scriptures, <coughs> you end by saying, Amen. <coughs> Amen. Okay, now one more time. This time you must read like this. A and D and... <laughs> All right, let's look at this scripture. So, I am teaching you what I personally practice. Not A and D and, not like that. <laughs> but just... So reading over and over and over. That is called meditation. You mutter. The word meditation in the Greek called haga. You mutter. You speak aloud. And when you speak aloud, you don't just speak. Your mind must think on the word. So you are speaking and thinking at the same time. So then your mind gets renewed and transformed. Your mind is changed. And the word of God, which is sharper than two-edged sword, will begin to chisel, chisel your mind, renew your mind, and re take away the old and replace it with the light of God. So that's why it is very important, not just read by your heart, but open your mouth and read aloud. All Jewish people know this because that's what the scripture, their traditions tells us. So, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold the tabernacle of God. So when I came there, I just stopped and I looked. Tabernacle of God. So I underlined the word tabernacle of God. But if you look at verse 2, in verse 2, the Apostle John said, And I saw John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. But in verse 3, he says, Behold the tabernacle of God. So I thought, eh, this is something different. In verse 2, it is New Jerusalem. But in verse 3, he says, Tabernacle of God. So I thought this is something different. So I underlined the word tabernacle of God. And then I continued reading. Is with men and he will dwell with them. It's new Jerusalem is coming down. And then the tabernacle of God is with men. 
and he will dwell with them. So I underline the word, he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. So they shall be his people. I underline the word, they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. And God shall be with them. Be with them. So I underline, be with them. And be their God. So I read this over and over and over again. Tabernacle of God. What is this tabernacle of God? Then suddenly, an illumination came to me. This is the exact thing that God told the prophet Moses in Exodus chapter 25 verse 8. Make me a sanctuary. And the Hebrew word for sanctuary is tabernacle. So make me a tabernacle for what purpose? That I may dwell among you. So now I connected to Revelation 21, 3, 2, Exodus 25, 8. I connected the two. When I connected the two, I began to now, I have now two scriptures, and I began to juggle them and meditate them. What is the relationship between what is written in Exodus versus what is the future? One is the past, another is the future. So here in Revelation it says, the tabernacle of God comes down, comes in your midst. And God is in your midst. And in Exodus, God told the prophet Moses, make me a tabernacle that I may dwell among you. So the real purpose of God for asking the prophet Moses to construct the tabernacle was not so much to create a temple or a church in the wilderness so that people can all come and pray in the temple or offer sacrifices. The real purpose was that I may dwell among you. Dwelling among you is the same as dwelling with you. Be with you. So, now I want you to open your heart and understand the larger picture of the heart and the desire of God. The whole concept of God asking Moses to build the tabernacle or for the new Jerusalem to come down as a tabernacle is not so much to have a place of worship. No, not a place of worship. The real purpose was for God to dwell among his people. That's the real purpose. But that could not take place. Why it cannot take place? Now we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Now we go to original creation. So this is how I meditated. So as I meditated one and one, one, then my mind began to expand. This is the, this is the way how the spirit of wisdom and revelation works. It will unfold like peeling an onion's layer. Layer by layer it unfolds and you will begin to see deeper and deeper and deeper. So now I went back to the Garden of Eden. So in the Garden of Eden, was there any tabernacle? No. There was no, but there were two things. There was God and there was man. So let's not go into argument, what about women? We don't argue, they are one. Okay, so for our discussion's sake, we'll not divide them into two. After all, woman was taken from men. Right, so they are one. So we'll just, for discussion's sake, we'll just talk about men. But remember, woman is still there. 
So God and men, and where was God? He dwelled among men. He dwelled not among men alone, dwell with men. He dwell with men. So the original purpose of God creating man was not for the purpose of just create man. Not for that purpose. It's an extension. An extension. Now to go back to the beginnings. Why is the devil so mad at you? Not just you, not mean you. Individual. As a whole. Why? You know, in uh, many companies today, if, let's say both of you have the same seniority, and then your boss wants to give a promotion to one person to be lifted up, and instead of you, or instead of your friend, your colleague, you get the promotion, how will your colleague feel? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! I'm so happy for you! Will your colleague say like that? No. Most often at times, they will boil with jealousy. Am I right? Yes. They'll boil with jealousy, and then they'll come up with a plan. How to pull you, pull you down so that they can get that promotion. Am I right? Yes. You see, this is what happened. When Satan fell, Lucifer, now, Reading from the scriptures, we do not know much about him unless and until the spirit of revelation teaches us what a highly exalted place he was in heaven. He was second to God. And in terms of beauty and in terms of the amount of glory and light that came out of him, he was second to the Lord Jesus. He was so gloriously made, so abundant light. The very definition of the name Lucifer means a bringer forth of light. Not just someone that shines light, but he brought forth light from him. You know, I must tell you one truth. We do not understand much about the world of angels. The many books <coughs> that I have read about angels, most of them are written strictly based on what the scripture says about angels, but not beyond that. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal to us something beyond, not against the scripture. Listen carefully. Not against scripture, but beyond. Means going deeper. So, Lucifer is not just someone who shines forth with light, but bring forth light. That means light from him can come out and he can direct it to go in whichever direction and purpose he wants. The angels were created with such power and authority. Not like what we have presently, uh, the limited understanding we have today about the world of angels. They are not just robots. Simply come, simply go, just pass message, they go. This is wrong, wrong teaching. They have emotions, they have a will, they can decide things on their own, they can will on their own, they have the same ability to choose to love, to choose to worship, to choose to obey like us. They have all that capability, ability. That's number one. Number two, they have their own individual lifestyle. And not two angels are the same. Just like us, not two persons are the same, right? We all look different although many of us look similar. So in the same manner, the angels differ, each one of them, they all are, look different, not the same. 
Number three, there are different categories of angels. Different. The few that we know is this seraphim, cherubim. Then we know about warrior angels. We heard about messenger angels. These are the four things you all know about. Am I right? But the, it is not limited to the four. There are many more which are written in the scriptures, but we have not classified them because we have not looked into that world. The little that we know, we classify into four categories. But if you read the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 10, a mighty angel comes and stands before the apostle John. He's so huge that his head touched the clouds. And if you look at the dress that he's wearing or the robe that he's wearing, is full of cloud. Cloud becomes his robe. And then there is a halo, like a rainbow over his head. And we always think, or we have been taught, I'm sure you have pictures, you have seen pictures, those who are in heaven, they have a halo on their head. <laughs> have you seen that? Now, where did we get that from? I never read anywhere in the Bible where there's a halo. I only read people like harps. Have you read that? But where did this halo come from? Wherever. Okay, wherever. But I tell you one truth, no halo. Sorry to disappoint you. But this angel in Revelation chapter 10 has a halo over his head and it's rainbow colors. Why? What does that signify? And then he brings a very powerful message to you to the Apostle John. So this angel belongs to which category? Messenger? Warrior? Cherubim? Seraphim? Which category? Category number five. Then you read in Revelation chapter eight, an angel that is involved in prayer. That's all he was involved in prayer. And he collects all the prayers of the saints on the earth, all the prayers that you pray, he collects them and he brings to heaven. And then it says, much more incense was given to him. So where did that much more incense come from? So the incense refers to prayers. So where did he get the prayers from? So this angel has collected prayers in the heavenly realm and brought and mixed it with your prayer. So there is a category of angels that are involved in prayer. Praying angels, they have their job to do. You cannot ask them to pray, they have their job to do. And then you read in Revelation chapter 15, a group of seven angels who abide in the temple in heaven. They are always there. And then they come out from the temple and the robe that they wear are so different. You don't find them carrying a sword and they are very glorious to look at. Now, which category to fit them in? Number? Six. No. Seven. Seven. Ah, seven. And these angels are in charge of pouring the wrath of God. And then in Revelation chapter 7, you read about four angels standing in the four corners of the earth and they are holding the wind in their hands. Now who are they? They are only in charge of doing that. Who are they? What category? Eight. And then in Revelation chapter 16, you read about an angel of God he was so powerful, so glorious, that when he came to earth, the whole earth lighted up, like how the noonday sun lights up. It's not the sun, not even God coming, just an angel. So, which category to put him? Number nine. See, I can go on and on. So, the 
the category expands. And then what do we know about the cherubim and the seraphim? And by the way, cherubim and seraphim have been wrongly included among the category of angels. That is wrong. Cherubim and seraphim should be rightly classified under the category of living creatures. Because they are not angelic group. You look at how they are with four heads and then with six wings, four wings, four hands, two hands, leg like a calf, leg like a lion, half leg, half human, half angel. Sounds like Narnia. <laughs> right? And you thought Narnia was fairy tale. Narnia is not fairy tale. The author of Narnia, C.S. Lewis, was a born again spiritual man who was blessed by God to see visions of the end times and heaven. He saw many, many things in heaven, but his call was to minister to children. So he wrote books describing heavenly things in such a way that children understand. But whatever he wrote, they all are real. Real things. You read about horses with wings. Which category to fit them in? Many, many mysteries are there. And I, in the last two years, I have been graced by God to see different categories of angels that are not even mentioned in the Bible. They are reserved for these last days. If you read Ephesians chapter 1, the apostle reveals, the apostle Paul reveals many mysteries. He says, all these have been hidden before the ages of time. They were hidden. That knowledge is hidden. The devil does not know everything. He doesn't know everything. He knows some things, but not everything. Hidden. The apostle Paul says, you know, if the devil knew that the Lord Jesus will rise up from the dead, he would not have killed him. Right? You remember reading that? See, that knowledge was hidden. He didn't know. He didn't know. That same thing goes to say, many, many choice servants of God, or women of God, or even little children that they die, before their time. Either the devil takes them out, or they kind of succumb to some spiritual attacks. They were not able to fight back to some other, through various reasons. Their death, the devil may think that he has won, he has taken them out. But that's wrong. He has created a bigger problem. Just like the Lord Jesus. He created a bigger problem when the Lord arose from the dead. But so now it's not just, he was not just dealing with one Lord Jesus, now with all of you. Because the Lord now abides in every one of you, right? Not just as the son of men, now as the son of God in resurrection power. So in the past he dealt with one Jesus, now he has to deal with several hundreds of Jesuses. Jesus. Am I right, everybody? That's what the Bible says, right? In the same manner. In the same manner. When a man of God dies, you know the scripture says, precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints. The scriptures does not say, precious in the sight of God, anyone who dies. It doesn't say that, right? He says, saints. So anyone who has reached that level, when they die prematurely, before their time, that death is very precious because it's not just a death. It is a transformation from one dimension to another dimension, from one realm to another realm. 
So it's so precious to God. And it spells doom to the devil. So in the beginning, so now come back to Lucifer. So Lucifer was a bringer forth of light. So as such, they can command, they have the ability to command and decree judgments, blessings. Let me give you two examples. In Genesis chapter 28, when, the, when Jacob fought with an angel, now many people, even many theologians and many Bible scholars, they wrongly interpret that that angel is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is wrong. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ. It is an angel. Do you think if it was the Lord Jesus Christ, a mortal man could fight with him? Logic. Right? He could not even have touched the Lord Jesus. He fought literally with an angel. It was an angel that he wrestled. This angel is none other than the angel that was assigned to protect over him all his life, watch over Israel. So he battled with the angel, and then before the angel left, he said, bless me. And the angel did bless him. They have the power to bless. They have the authority to bless, but not all angels. Those very high ranking ones, they have the authority, they have the power, but again, they cannot do things on their own unless and until they are permitted by God. They have that authority, but they cannot use them as and when they like. Second example, in Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel appeared before Zacharias. And when Zacharias refused to believe what the angel Gabriel said, what did Gabriel do? You be dumb. Right? Did he say, because you did not believe me, God shall cause you to be dumb? Did he say like that? He did not say like that. He said, you be dumb. So it was the angel who pronounced a judgment. See, he, he has that delicate authority. They can bless, they can pronounce judgment. So here we have Lucifer. The highest among all created angels and like a son of God, standing by the right hand of God. And he was created specially, mark this, we all know this, to praise and worship God. So because he was created for that purpose, Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 12 to 14 tells us, Every kind of musical instruments were built into his body. And I saw this in heaven once. When he lifts up his wings, an entire musical symphony comes out from his body. And when, when the musical symphony notes comes out from his body, all the millions and billions of angels in heaven, they'll begin to sing and dance and worship God. And he was conducting. So now he's standing. Now you imagine like this, okay? Let's imagine this is the throne of God and God is seated here. And Lucifer was standing here. Standing here to conduct. Have you seen conductors who conduct symphony? They stand in front, right? All the musicians are at the back. And that's why he stands and all the billions of angels and all the billions of created beings in heaven. They all will bow down and worship God. So when, when now I'm standing here, when all of you bow down and worship, what will I think? To whom are you bowing down? You're bowing down to me, right? This is what happened to him. Instead of looking there, instead of thinking, no, 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 they're not bowing before me. I'm just conducting. I am created just like them. That thought departed. And he began to entertain, no, they all are bowing down to me. They all are bowing down to me. Little by little, that thought corrupted him. 
when the thought corrupted him, the Lord wanted to correct him. The Lord gave him many opportunity to correct him. Okay, we will not go into all the great details about all that, because then you will have to s stay here the whole night, <laughs> which I know you are unwilling to do. Amen or no amen? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so the exalted position that he had was plucked away from him and he was banished. And to whom it is given now? To you. You were created to replace Lucifer. That's who you are. You were created to replace Lucifer. That is why the scriptures say you are seated at the right hand of God. Because that's where Lucifer was. That's where he was. Now his place given to you, do you think he will keep quiet? Will you think, oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful daughters from Romania. I'm so happy you took my place. Be blessed. Will he say like that? No, oh, you Romania. Ah, those two ladies are from Romania. Hmm. So that's why he is very angry at mankind. So that's why at every opportunity he wants to trip you to make you fall. Okay, so now the basic premise is you were created to sit there. So if that is true, why are you not there? Why were you on earth? Now to explain that, now we have to need to go back to history. History is God didn't want to lose you as how he lost Lucifer. See anything, I tell you this, you can uh, understand this from your basic life. Anything that is freely given to us, we never value them, right or wrong, right? This is human nature. But if, even if you pay one penny, that becomes precious because you paid something for it. So Lucifer was created and the authority and the honor was freely given to him without he working for it. So therefore, he did not know how to value it. So he lost it. So when God created you, he wants to make sure that you sit there for good. We will not lose. So therefore, he put us in the garden to learn one basic lesson. The one essential quality from which Lucifer fell. Can anybody tell me? COP. Some more. You asking me? Yeah? <laughs> Don't ask me question. You must give answer. Obedience. <laughs> ah. Why? Your answer must be answer. Not, not you turn the answer into a question. Obedience. Huh? Okay. What did you say? Pussy. Okay. Think lah. Yeah. Think, think, think. What, what did you say? obedience pride is the external the real thing is obedience it's not pride pride is what was formed after the basic is obedience love the Lord thy God with all your heart with all your soul with all that is strength obey the Lord your God obedience is the cardinal principle. 
Obe- in obedience, you love God. In obedience, you worship God. In obedience, you obey God. So basic is obedience. So Satan, Lucifer fell because he failed in obedience. So now man must come to that position, but first he must learn obedience. That is why God made the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was a training ground for obedience. If he had not sinned, the progress of him would have been different. Now because he failed in the test of obedience, now everything goes on the reverse. That is why when the Lord Jesus Christ came to this world, his one entire life, from the day he was born till the day he died, you can summarize his life by one word. Obedience. Obedience. In uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, you'll read, He feared God, or he obeyed God, and learned obedience by the things he suffered. Why did he suffer? To learn obedience. All his life, he learned obedience. I can do nothing of my own except what I see my father do. What is it? Obedience. So where Lucifer fell, where he failed, and where men fail, the second Adam came and lived a complete life and gave us an example. It is absolutely possible to live a life of obedience. So if it is absolutely possible, then why are we not living a life of obedience? You may ask, because I ask. And comes back to one basic answer. Surrender. We are not willing to surrender. We are not willing to submit. We are not willing to consecrate. All our submission, all our surrender, all our yielding is not 100%. 10%, 20%, 50%. And the other 50%, let's suppose you surrendered 50%. The other 50% is your S-E-L-F, self. And it is that self that always strips you down. Because you have not surrendered that self. You're still holding back. You still want your own way. Each time you want your own way, the devil comes. See, for you to truly live the overcoming life, your model is the Lord Jesus. Totally surrendered. Totally. Not even one iota you do on your own. Now that does not mean you are living a robotic life. Why can't I do things on my own? Why can't I have things my own way? You see, the very confession that comes out of my heart comes out of your mouth. Why can't I? I. See? I. I. Where did the I come from? Lucifer. See, what? Next time, you watch what you say. And then you will know how much of self is still inside you. Each time you say, I, but not just all the time, I. Because you must say, I am coming. (laughs) (laughs) That is not self. That's not pride. That's not disobedience. You need to use that word, I. Who are you? I am Tan Akao. You have to use I appropriately. But what I'm saying, you know what I mean, right? I want this. I want my way. Why can't I? But why? All that is a reflection of the I. A declaration of 
independence. Let me tell you, my dearly beloved people, a true Christian, one who lives in Christ, there is no independence. There is only a dependence. Independence is rebellion. You look at all the nations who became independent, they all rebelled. Am I right? True. You look at them, rebel from British, we got independence. And they all celebrate National Day. It's not National Day, it's Rebellion Day. <laughs> Am I right? Rebellion Day, they are rebelling. And then they come out and they declare, oh, I'm free now. Not free, you become the worst slave. <clears throat> so that concept of independence is the spirit of Lucifer. Because he declared independence. I will set up my throne above the Most High. You read Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14, and you'll find Lucifer saying, I, 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 five times. Five times. And five is the number of grace, right? So he lost grace. When he keep on saying, I, 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 he lost. I will set up my throne on high. I will be like the most high. I, I, I. So that declaration of independence is the spirit of Lucifer. So God wants to bring us back to that position. In the Garden of Eden, God made men and he dwell among them. He dwell with men and he was their God and Adam was his people. See the same concept that you see in Revelation originally started in the book of Genesis. It started there. God made men, God made women and then they have their children and their children have their children and the children have their children. If there was no sin, God would have walked in their midst and walk out from them and dwell with them, dwell among them and they would have seen the face of God till today. You and I will all be seeing the face of God like how we look at each other's faces if there was no sin in the first place. Now because of sin, now Isaiah 59 verse 2 tells us a wall of separation has come that prevented Adam from seeing God. But if you look at the scriptures very carefully, they were cast out of the presence of God, cast out because now they cannot stay in holy place. Why? Holy and unholiness cannot mix. The simple reason for casting Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, not so much because they disobeyed, but now they have lost holiness. You cannot abide in the land of the living. You cannot. Light cannot mix with darkness. Now, so, but the heart attitude of God is always to dwell with his people, not to be alienated. So now we come to the book of Exodus. So God commanded the prophet Moses to make the tabernacle. Now where was the tabernacle situated? Right in the center of the 12 tribes. Right in the center. Now, you, I want you to listen very carefully, God's original plan. The tabernacle was to be pitched right in the center. That was the plan that God gave to Moses, that I may dwell among them, not outside them. Among them in your midst. But the event of Exodus chapter 32, 
when they milked, when they made the golden calf. Okay, they made a golden calf and the silly people committed a sin. God is gracious to forgive them. But what really angered God was Aaron, together with all the people, they bowed down and worshipped the idol. Not only they worshipped the idol, they said, this is the God that brought you out of Egypt. You know how sacrilegious you just imagine, there are many mothers here. Suddenly someone comes and tells you, they point, uh, they take your daughter or your son and tell your daughter and son, look at this wood. This wood is where you came out from. <laughs> As a mother, how will you feel? You went through all the labor pains. You carried your baby for nine months and then you struggle, you almost died delivering your baby and then for someone to come and say no 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 this wood you came from the wood oh really you are not your mother the wood how will you feel tell me that's how God felt you're pointing to an idol and that idol is the chief god of the Egyptians and they're saying this god brought you out of Egypt not Jehovah God so, because of that, God said, I will no more dwell among them. No more. So, God told Moses, pitch the tent outside, far away from where they are, because I will destroy them. If I walk in their midst, I will destroy them. Okay, I will not do that. Why he will not do that? Because of the intercession of Moses. Because Moses prayed in Exodus chapter 32. He said, Lord, if you touch them, you first touch me. So the Lord said, all right. Because of you, I spare them. However, I pull my presence away. I pull my presence and pitch my tent outside far away. Only the prophet Moses was allowed to pitch his tent near the tabernacle. No one else allowed. Only Moses allowed. Can you imagine? Let's imagine. This is where the tabernacle was. And all of you are supposed to be around. And God is in the center. Now, the tent moved far away. And all of you are here. And the tent is there. And if you want to see God, from here you have to walk all the way there. That's how we have been alienated. Was it the will of God? No. So, all the while, God wants to remove this away. So in the New Testament, now come back to the New Testament, the Lord Jesus was born. What is the purpose of Jesus Christ being born? That God tabernacled among men. Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? I'm sure you all know. God with us. You see, from Genesis, Exodus, now New Testament. God with us. So the Lord God came to dwell among his people. For what purpose? To embrace his people. And eventually embrace them and make them one in him. For that purpose he came. And did the people embrace him? The scripture says, he came unto his own and his own rejected him. No, we don't want you. We don't want you to dwell among us. And they push him back. This time, God did not push them. They pushed God out. Out. You go far away. Don't come near us. Let us live our own lives. How many of us say that? Let me live my own life. You don't tell me what to do. I live my own life. So the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. He died. He rose again. But the purpose of God was to redeem mankind. And the law was given not 
to be to demonstrate a very hard-hearted God. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't this. No, 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 no. Not that purpose. Galatians chapter three verse twenty-four tells us that the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ Jesus. Many of you mothers, you know when you brought up your child, you always tell your child, "Don't do this. Don't do that." Am I right? Do you do that, or you sit down and reason? You say, "Child, this is fire, and fire kills, fire destroys." Doso, don't go near fire. Will you say like that? No, you just say, "Don't touch fire," right? That's exactly what God said. Thou shalt not. So why is it that you say it's okay, God say not okay? <laughs> Am I right? How how is it that what you say is okay? You tell your child, "Thou shalt not." Instead of "Thou shalt not," because that's King James English, you are using modern English. Don't, don't. <laughs> say ma. You can write on one modern Bible. Instead of "Thou shalt not," don't bow down to idols. Now it sounds better. So why is it that is wrong, but what you say is okay? It's the same. It's the same. But when your child gets older, then you don't need to say "Don't." You can now reason. Am I right, everybody? You can reason. And your child has now grown to understand. So that's how the law was a schoolmaster, bring you to Christ. Now, when he brought to Christ, the Scripture says, the law is no more on stone. Now the law is written in your heart. It's written in your heart. Now you don't need anybody to tell you, don't do this, don't do that. You know, you know, it's now inside you. The law is inside you. So the ultimate purpose now is God dwelling among you. So now, when you are born again, that purpose of the law written in your heart is not only written in your heart; something else takes place. Now, turn your Bibles with me to Second Corinthians, chapter six, verse sixteen. You will be amazed to find that Revelation 21:3 is almost exactly the same as 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them. And walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, I would like you to notice this scripture very carefully again, and I'm going to read very slowly, and I want you to look at your own Bible and underline those important words. God had said, "I will dwell in them, in them." And walk in them, in two ins, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. It's no more among, no more among. That word has changed now. No more among. Now it's in you. Now I want you to stretch your thinking a little bit. We are going to put Genesis, Exodus, and Second Corinthians together, and I'm going to show you one magical picture. The magical picture is this. You can receive. You can receive. Okay. The magical the the magical picture is. It is within you. Heaven is within you. Garden of Eden, within you. That is what has transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
in that one moment when the blood washes you, your whole being is transformed from a tabernacle of man into the tabernacle of God. That's why God said, God, that's why God did not say, I will dwell with you. He said, in you. In you and walk in you. Several years ago, I meditated the scripture. Dwell in you, walk in you. What does it mean, in you, walk in you? How can God walk inside me? There's no space, isn't it? Look at my size. <laughs> if I was someone larger, at least there's some room to walk. Right? Look at my size. How to walk? So I thought, you know, in my simple mind, this is how, in my childlike mind, I meditate like this, I ask questions. So I tell the Holy Spirit, how is it possible? But the Holy Spirit doesn't laugh at me like how you all laughing. <laughs> you, you all very bad. <laughs> so he, he lovingly tells me, let me show you. So once I, when I was meditating the scripture, I fell into a trance. When I fell into my trance, my spiritual eyes looked, it, it turned inside. When it turned inside, I saw inside my body a vast expanse of space. I knew it was my body. But now, when I, see, my body is about this size. I think 34. Uh, no plus plus. Only, only. Th <laughs> Why? <laughs> no plus. Uh, how I know 34 is because I just bought a jeans. So, size 34. Waist size 34. Okay? So, <laughs> plus plus. Ayo. Wow. I don't come to Indonesia. <laughs> All plus plus is there. No. So, when I look down, instead of a limit between this point to this point, I saw vast expanse of space. And the vast expanse of face, space was not just empty, it was a garden. It was a beautiful garden and within that I saw God walking and I was still dumbfounded I thought I was looking at something else and then the Holy Spirit said what you are looking is what 2nd Corinthians 6 16 says God dwells in you and walk in you this is the same position where Adam was. It's inside you, deep inside you. That is why the Lord Jesus said in Luke chapter 17 verse 21, the kingdom of God is within you. It's not somewhere outside, it's within, deep within you. And that is why it is very important to care for the temple of your body. Very important. Why such among many sins, sexual sins is more terrible is because your body is the temple of God. And when you commit sexual sins outside the legitimacy of marriage, either you fornicate or you commit extra uh, premarital sex, and you sleep around with many partners before you get married. See, what you're doing is you're yoking. You're becoming, you're becoming one with someone. See, today it's fashionable to sleep around. Right? Fashionable. They just, people don't get married. They, they stay late and they just sleep around. So can you imagine the moment you commit, you sleep with one person, your soul becomes one with that one person. And then you sleep with another person, your soul becomes one with another person. And then you sleep with another person, your soul becomes one with another person. 
So, which soul is your soul? You lose your identity. And now, we have a worse problem. It's not a woman sleeping with another woman, I mean another man, now it's a woman sleeping with another woman. Both are confused, lost identities. So what does it become? If they don't mate, what do they become? A demonic offspring. A demonic offspring. All these will lead to the return of the Nephilim. Have you heard of the Nephilim? Yes. This is what happened in Genesis chapter 6. All the gay movement is leading towards that. A man having sex with a man, woman having sex with a woman, and then man having sex with animals. All this is moving towards that. Eventually, the spirit beings will come to have sex relationship. And a new offspring will be born. Nephilim. That will certainly come. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43 tells us that. And they will mingle with the seed of men. They will mingle. It is coming. A horrible second coming of the Nephilim is coming. That is why the scripture says, be holy. Be separate from all this and be clean. Because your temple is God dwelling inside you. You know, the moment you let this realization sink inside you, your entire prayer life will change. Each time when you sit in the presence of God and you become quiet, you are in an instant translated to the very Garden of Eden. Very Garden of Eden before sin came. And there you enjoy sweet concourse with God. God walks in you, God dwells in you. So this ultimately leads to the new Jerusalem coming down with the tabernacle of God. Now that brings us to one final point. The final point is the purpose of our creation. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21 says, we were created to offer praise to God. Have you heard of that? We are a praise to God. That is exactly what Lucifer did. So what Lucifer did is now what you are called to do. To offer praises to God. You are made a kingdom of priests to offer spiritual sacrifices unto God. Amen? Amen. Now, in the new kingdom, in the tabernacle of God, when the tabernacle is here, now we just go back a little bit to Genesis. What is the real purpose of, your, of you being created? What is the real purpose? Not just to sit at the right hand of God. The scripture says we are now seated at the right hand of God. Right? Now I want you to think slowly now. We go step by step. Okay, ma. Okay, okay, step by step. You are seated at the right hand of God and we are reigning together. Reigning means ruling together. Am I right? Okay, now I have a question. Ruling what? Okay, if you say rule over this world, your answer is half correct. But now we are talking about after every drama has ended. After the devil is gone, everybody gone. Now you are still seated, your position is seated at the right hand. Now you are still ruling. Ruling what? Ah, ruling what? Question mark. Okay, universe is right answer. Okay, we need to quantify the answer. Purpose. See, now I want you to look at this one word. Kingdom of priests. A kingdom is not just 
a country. A kingdom includes a king, kingly rule. So it's kingly priest. So who are you? You are a kingly priest. As a kingly priest, a king is someone who has authority, who rules over. So who are you going to rule over in the heaven? You cannot rule over God. Can you rule over God? No. You cannot rule over angels. No. Rule over what? Now this now leads to the other mystery of the Melchizedek. Why the scripture says we are created and made after the order of the Melchizedek because now we go back to the main thing. The main thing. Who is Melchizedek? King and priest. Kingly priest. So Melchizedek is a kingly priest. So now we are restored back, put together back in the original call, kingly priest. So kingly priest rule over what? Who are you going to rule over? Who are you going to reign over? Who? After the millennium, the devil destroyed, all his evil destroyed, all the evil people destroyed. So the only people remaining are the saints. So you cannot rule over me, I cannot rule over you, right? Because you are kingly priest, I also kingly priest. <laughs> Am I right, everybody? So both of us are kingly priests. And in the new beginnings, we won't be fighting over one another because we'll all be walking in love. So if we all are walking over love, who are we going to rule? You know, I like astronomy. Okay, from small I like astronomy. And it has always fascinated me, why all those planets? Why all the stars? Why? Why? Not just to light up the blackened sky. Are you sure? Am I right? Not just blacken up, okay, fill up all the places. Not, not for that purpose. See, like this empty stage, we put all these flowers to fill up. The universe is not designed for that purpose. I, I'm, am I right? So, why so many galaxies? Why so many? Milky Way is one galaxy. In the Milky Way, you are not the only one. I mean, when I say you, I mean planet Earth. Planet Earth is not the only Earth in Milky Way. In the Milky Way, there are many solar systems. Among the many solar systems, we are one. And in this solar system, there are nine planets. Supposed to be ten, I don't know why they read, they minus one. Pluto, finally, they discovered. When I was studying in school, Pluto, Pluto, Pluto was always a planet. Now, suddenly, in the new digital age, Pluto is out. Okay, whatever it is, nine planets. So nine planets in our solar system, but there's another solar system. In another solar system, let's suppose, let's all come to one figure, okay? All nine, 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 nine. Okay, why those nine planets? Why Mars? Why Jupiter? Why Uranus? Have you ever thought that? Why? Why? What's the purpose? Now, yesterday we read about Deborah. In Deborah chapter 5, verse 20 to 22, the scripture says, and the stars fought from their course. Stars fought from their courses, meaning not the angel stars, the real stars in the heaven. They fought. How can planets fight? Strange, isn't it? How can they fight? But it says the stars fought from their causes. Now, this is, uh, now you all who follow our ministry, you know who is Pastor Adi Banjo, right? A few years ago, Pastor Adi Banjo came to speak at uh, Angel TV for his uh, messages. And while he was preaching, he was given revelation about the scripture. 
that the stars, all these years, when I read the scripture, I used to think stars means angels. Go by the interpretation in Revelation chapter 1. But he received revelation from the Lord. It is not the angels, but the real stars. A redeemed person, filled with the powers of the age to come, you can command the stars to move. A proof for that is, Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand. Now, the moon is at least our neighbor, closer, 186,000 miles away. But look at the sun, 93 million kilometers. And this man standing in one place, in one small dot, looked at the sun and said, Stop! And the voice that he spoke stopped a planet, a star, 93 million miles away. How is it possible? This now comes back to the other revelation that I want to share with you about the seat. The seat. Remember I told you this morning? The word of revelation that I received this morning was, seat has light. And the seat has light, and the seat that abides in you is light. And because the seat is light, the word that you speak is light. And the word that you speak, which is light, and light is not just light, it is creative. It creates. That's why we should be careful of what we speak. We should not speak curse words, nonsense words, because what you speak will create something. You create something and you will be ensnared by your own words. And because the word is light, the seed that abides in you is light. When you speak the word, now, now come back to Joshua, okay? With this understanding, let's look at Joshua. So the seed of light dwelt in Joshua, and when he spoke, sun, stand still. The word that came out of his mouth moved in faster than the speed of light. Any one of you knows what's the speed of light? Pusataule? COP? Never teach you Allah. Hundred and eighty six thousand miles per second. Speed of light. But I tell you one truth today the speed of light is the speed of fallen nature, not the original speed of light before sin came. Before sin came, the speed of light is the speed of thoughts. Today, because of sin, the speed reduced. It reduced, it has a constant. But in the past, originally, there was no constant. It is as fast as your thinking. Okay, if you close your eyes, you think Jupiter. Can you see Jupiter? You cannot, ah. Okay, no, don't go too far. The moon. You all know how the moon like. If you think moon, can you see the picture of the moon in your mind? Yes. You see, it's faster than the speed of light. That's the speed of thoughts. In heaven, that's how we travel. The moment you think, you are there. So, when he spoke the word in one instant, it created something. It stopped the light. And that's exactly what Deborah did. Now, Deborah not only stopped, she moved. Her word moved the stars. And that caused atmo atmospheric condition changes that caused a normal river to rise up like a tsunami and destroy the army of Sisera. It's all where? The seat, the seat of light. Why? How is it possible? Because the kingdom of God is within you. 
the kingdom is within you. So keep this thought in mind. Now that kingdom of God must become a reality. And that reality becomes when we walk in obedience. Now you come back to the final fundamental. Obedience and a life of praising God, worshipping God, for which we have been created. You have been created to offer praise to God, offer worship to God. Amen? Amen. I have just shared with you half the secret, the other half, next conference. It's already 9.32 now, you know. If I go on, you'll go on to become 12.32. You don't want that, right? Amen. So we will keep that, no? Next one. So much, this is enough for now. It's already a little mind-boggling. Next one will be more deeper. So let's all stand up for a word of prayer. The real secret of the Melchizedek. That's what the next one. That's not even what I've thought in the Melchizedek teaching. Let's lift up our hearts.